A very, very, very good morning. It's quite an exciting morning today. I am privileged to have had one of those things you can now put on down in your, in your notes that I had an intellectual conversation. I've been having a, a, a morning filled with intellectual conversation with the quiet intellectual people. Unfortunately, they are coming to you. They are going to be speaking to you. And it is always my honor and my privilege to be the one hosting them. My name is Moa Apollo. As, 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 as has been and always will be the headmaster of this class. This is one of the times when we say the next two hours, let's compose ourselves into students and that be students of money. As students of money, we know, or as students of anything, we have learned so many other things. We have learned chemistry, we have learned biology, we have learned accounts, we have learned GPD and Gabongo. We have done so many things and we have learned them, yes, and they have helped us or not helped us. But no one ever teach, sits down to teach us about money. The money I'm talking about is the money in your pocket. Sometimes it is assumed because you are now the director, you are now the CEO, you are now the managing director, you are now the, the officer. No one needs to tell you about money. No. As NSSF, we feel it is within our purpose to come to you and talk about your money. Why? Because you have money with us and we'd want to make sure that when this money leaves us, this money that, that you have with us is hanging around with uh, billions, it's hanging around with trillions. When it comes to you, it better finds some hundreds of millions with you. Otherwise, it will flee from you. Good morning and good morning. Allow me to start and uh, as is my uh my, my 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 purpose here is just to do an introduction and before i do that allow me to just share with you a few pointers if the back office team is kind enough to share that powerpoint as is we'll always remind you on why we do this as nssf and we'll continue doing it uh and we are talking about your benefits this is a particular it's very very Unique to us, uh, the audience this morning is unique. I know we usually have this on the Tuesdays, Tuesdays afternoon, but the ones we have on Fridays is talking to people who are in sight of their benefits. And we call it your benefits because we are talking about you are in the year of your benefits. You are 12 months away from receiving your benefits. And we want to, we are, all we are saying today is those benefits need to count. If you are to be counted by your grandchildren, you need to make your benefits count. While we are starting this morning, uh, uh, allow me to digress a bit. We had a discussion on, should children like us unconditionally? And uh, I, I was the devil's advocate and I was telling you, children will not like you un un unconditionally. Yes, you did a good job, brought them to earth. Yes, you did a great job uh, taking them through school. But that job was still your job. It will, no one should thank you for it. You did all, all the good things for them. And you did it for them. And when they get better, when they start working, do not even think the investment you did, in, you did for them was for you. It is for them. So, will they like me because I did all these things? That is not enough. You need to take care of yourself. So, you need to make your benefits. And all everything you have worked, all you've, everything you have done, you have got accumulated, take care of you. And your children, if they choose to, will be a bonus. Create that conflict where they, un they can't find a chance to take care of you. They, 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 they are fighting to find a chance to, can I also contribute to this? And you already have already taken care of it. That is the ideal person we are looking at. So why do we do this as NSSF? One, we want to reverse that trend that benefits have a short life cycle. We pay out benefits and in two years when we look for them, they are not there. Someone has no evidence that they ever received their benefits. That needs to change. We do this because we want to build a financially empowered membership. Empowered and aware. We need to be aware of where our money is going, where our money is coming from, both in, during employment and in retirement. And we do this because we want to give our members various, various options. Each of you needs to have an option. Not, a, not an option, but options in life, over life. You need to have that. And why, uh, and, and as NSSF, if you go to the next slide, you'll see that as NSSF, what we do is the easiest. Us and your employer, we do the easiest thing about your retirement. It's, it's the easiest. What we do is just collect your money, pick it from you, sometimes even by force. We keep it away from you. We grow it. Then we pay you when you are eligible. That's our role. And there are seven, six, about 600 people involved in doing this. But when it comes to spending, you are alone just alone 
So while all these are the sm smallest things you can do, picking money is easy. 600 of us are doing it. Growing it is easy. 600 of us is doing it. Paying it is easy. 600 of us are doing it. Spending it, it's you. That time is going to come and we pay you that money and it is you are alone to spend that money. And one person, it's not easy. It's not easy. You do not become different overnight. How you've been spending your money every month is how you sp your, your NSSF will be spent. Your benefits, your provident benefits will be spent. If you've been receiving money on a monthly via salary and 10 days later, there is nothing to show for it, most likely your, your NSSF will follow the same trend. So you do not become different overnight. And we are saying let's get into this and start developing our financial muscles. We are doing this, we are having this, we are going into this class to develop our financial muscles. If your muscles have been used to pick money, spend money, pick money, spend money, can we now give them a different exercise? Pick money, grow money, uh, sustain money, eat money. Pick money, grow, sustain, then eat. Pick, grow, sustain, then eat. Can we bring them to that bit? And it takes time. Then, fi as, as I, 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 again, I want to show these numbers, but from these numbers, I will just pick out one number. And that number has not changed. This is the number of only 5% of people who have graced the workplace. 5%, not just NSSF members, but even government, are able to attain financial independence. I know you are tired of this number, but I, until it changes, that's when I was talking about this number. Only 5%, 95% of us are working and then are going to end up going back to the village. You left the village, you told them, I am not coming back, I have gone to make money in Kampala. You retire and then your children are encouraging you go back to the village because you need to drop in level. You are unable to sustain yourself. You have spent 30 years in Kampala and all of a sudden they are telling you you can't sustain yourself in Kampala because the job has gone away. That is a picture that needs to change. You need to go back to the village by choice. And when you go back to the village, you need to be that person that changes the village. Not that person who is asking in the village, where are the newspapers? This, the, the, there's no registration in English here. No, don't you be, you be the person to do those things there. Not to be the one becoming a burden to people in the village. The people you left didn't go to school, have all of a sudden left you. They have done great things in the village, and now you are coming back with English. English without money is vernacular. Finally, allow me to just show you some of these statistics. People at 50 and at 55 who have picked their benefits and how they are spending their life. 45% of people above 55 years are still in full employment. According to us, we are saying they have retired, but they are still in full employment. Not by, not, not by choice, but because they have to work. There are 18 of them who are retired, but they are not retired by choice, but they are unable to work. They have pleaded and pleaded when they told them, no, you can't work. 18% are owning their own, uh, running their own businesses. 11% prefer not to say. Now, when you prefer not to say, you know. You know. It is unsaid, it, it is unsaid, but you know. 5% are employed part-time. And there is a 4% which is going around seeking for opportunities. Gentlemen and ladies listening to us here, I am having this conversation and I'm sure I, it's targeting the people of 45 years and above. But when you, if you are 20 years and uh, 20 to 30 and you are listening, put a keen ear, keen, 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 keen ear so that you do not, we do not have this same conversation. There is a myth that when you go into retirement, when you grow older, the, the responsibilities, the expenses go down. According to our survey, the dependency burden of people in employment in, in retirement, people have dependents, about 5.2 dependents per retiree. Now you might have you might have three children, but in retirement you might have more dependents than the children. So that actually your responsibilities still go up. Your responsibilities are maintained. Medical is still there. You still need you still need to the salt, you still need the food. Food is still there. You may not want to, you may not be working and you don't encounter transport. But once in a while you go to bury a former colleague and that transport is needed. So whatever you are spending now, I want you to take a keen, just take off a minute and reflect 
what do you think will go away in retirement? And you might find that nothing might actually go away in retirement. Finally, I never leave this without sharing some of these things. When you retire, your first day is going to be quiet. Your designation ceases. We again, just tapping into an, a, a former conversation we had. Your designation ceases, but we insist on putting former. I am the former CEO. But it still has ceased. I, uh, you see that building? I was the former property manager there. You see that school? I'm the former head teacher there. And the only, the only thing that was, was, was hard, feel, uh, hard feeling about this conversation is that I am maybe the only one going to retire with my title. Sir Headmaster, sir. That one is not going to cease. Your position becomes vacant. Like the position you've been occupying all of a sudden is vacant. And it is filled. Sometimes filled even before you go. Your benefits, the benefits. I'm talking about when you're going, to, you're going into retirement. When you go into retirement, your benefits are withdrawn. You have a temptation to stay in the past. A very strong, strong temptation to stay in the past. To stay, and, and by staying in the past, you are trying to, to stay into all those things of, uh, I used to be driven in an SUV. I need to be in this SUV. I will need to afford. I, I, I had a chauffeur, to, 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 a driver to drive me around. I need to have a driver. You, you tend to want, you used to, to, to put on suits every morning and a tie. And now all of a sudden you want to put on suits, and, 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 but you are in the village. Where are you going? So you have that temptation, and it's very strong. You have to leave. You have to leave. I want to say that again. You have to leave. Wh whatever you do, you will eventually leave. One of the things and the biggest and the most important information I've ever received on an orientation in a new job is when I was told that you have to leave this job. While I was coming in, they were telling me, you have to leave. And indeed, at a certain point, I left. Even the one I'm having now, they constantly remind me every morning that, guys, you are in transit. This is not your father's place. You are in transit. You have to leave. Retirement will start. It can be lonely if you have no purpose. If you have not created a purpose in your own life while you are in employment, retirement can become a lonely place. And how do we do that? We need to make our workplace a training ground. Every day you are at the workplace, please understand that that is training for retirement. Active employment is active training for retirement. You cannot, you cannot train in retirement for retirement. No. There is no training on the job. The training ground is in employment. How are you preparing? Because your benefits have to count. If your children are to count you, do not be one of those grandparents where they say we have a, a judge and they have to describe you by the where you live but the children never actually get to live get to come to see you or when they come to see you it is just a few minutes and they go away you cannot afford to accommodate them you cannot afford to feed them according to your children but when you have your benefits counting your grandchildren you start counting to your grandchildren. You start being counted. Gentlemen, as I finish, and ladies, I don't know why I'm fixed on the gentlemen today. Maybe because I see the ladies are doing well in retirement. I think so. It is personal. And again, I repeat, it is personal. You need to remember that always this is personal. Your money is personal. Your retirement is personal. You may be in a group but you retire as a person. You never go with those uh, colleagues. You could have been hugging and sharing tea and doing all the things together, but when it comes to retirement, you leave that door alone. And no one will exchange their place for yours. Good morning. Allow me to now introduce our good panel. And as has been, uh, Every time you see characters here, then you know we are talking about old age. Do not put those two together. But every time you see characters here, we are talking about preparing for our retirement. Caritas has been kind enough to, 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 to have this conversation with us, to interrogate this conversation. And uh, she has also enrolled as a student. She's one of those persons that is going to end up 
we, we are looking at her and we are studying the journey that by the time she retires she will be a cool judge she will have all that with the, all the information that she's receiving and interrogating from our panelists here for your benefit she's she's taking the first benefit caritas is kind enough to always give us a little bit of what she has gone through but specifically this time she had to fly back i'm telling you her mini retirement is doing her well she had to fly back to have to come and host this show thank you caritas for making time thank you for always obliging we 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 couldn't get this gentleman in the times you wanted because they are busy people they are busy in retirement can you imagine busy in retirement and i also need to bring apologies to for from juma again another busy in retirement person he was unable to make it for this panel but we are still going to have a conversation caritas as usual i need to remind you that when they are referring to me they refer to me as sir headmaster sir yes i need to make my retirement strong thank you so much and over to you thank you sir headmaster sir eh, you even had to pause you're the only one retiring with your title we get it <laughs> as we're going to be cool judges well my name is caritas and as always a pleasure to be here and um like sir headmaster Star sir said a lot has been going on since the last webinar we had which I always learn so much, just like you, I learn so much. I mean, we keep learning no matter how old we are. Okay, so today is one of those classes, those classes that I enjoy. Now, today's class, I don't even want to waste time on where I've been, what I've been up to. I'll tell you those ones later. <laughs> As we go on, I'll keep throwing them in. But yes, I've been to, I've been up to a lot of good, and I'm glad I'm going to share. I took some lessons from the last class. So today, we've been sitting here behind, uh, we always say behind the camera, we were having serious conversations and you know when they say your network is your net worth, mine is growing, sir headmaster, sir, you can see mine is really growing and, and thanks to you. Yeah, thanks to you. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so um, today I'm I'm with some lovely gentlemen. Okay, we are we we were meant to have Juma, but not around, uh, and not able to sh to be with us. But I've got two gentlemen here with me today. You've already yeah, the cameras are already on them. Hey, the knowledge that sits here with me. <laughs> you don't know. I keep telling people that okay, r let let me talk about a story of us of long ago. Yeah. We didn't really have so many people helping us. I call this maybe uh, skilling, financial skilling. We didn't have so many people come for us. You know, there was not these type of opportunities where people were telling us, uh, advising us or skilling us on uh, things to do with life and things to do with money, like we're talking about today. It was for us to decide, for the few, I'll talk for me and a couple of others, we had to figure life out financially. And oh boy, we made mistakes. I keep saying if, if, if I knew what I know now financially, yo, I think I'd be a millionaire billionaire <laughs> i don't know yet to find that one out so let me go ahead and first of all introduce my uh, guests for today i'm going to start from my father's left and i'm going to introduce mr kaviswa uh kaviswa david who is into skilling financial knowledge he shares it he's he he there's 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 a title that i want to understand uh uh sebo transition expert i feel like you and i should really be friends because i feel i've been transiting i'm still transiting so i don't know i need to understand what a transition expert does <laughs> your, your microphone Yes. That, that, that came from Sir Headmaster. So yeah. when I also saw it as uh, equally surprised, <laughs> I said they need to get a, a, a description of what this kind of looks like. But maybe after this discussion, you w we will know. Yeah, either I prove myself correct. Or we will yeah, know. We will know. Yes. And uh, he's 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 so much into all the 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 area to do with training and uh, sharing knowledge and skilling youth and even mature adults like some of us. <laughs> And thank you so much for making time. You're so welcome. And closest to me here is a gentleman who is, when we start going into the profile, 
those of you get to be video will just you know continue the day would have already been done your profile is i was reading it and i was thinking wow okay hold on how old is he but yes <laughs> uh mr francis kamlegia thank you so much for making time thank you so much i when i look at your whole profile the the one place i'm going to focus on i know you were former partner <laughs> with pwc and that's the conversation we were having earlier on and uh you left david and myself wondering eh, that was quite a decision for you to be another word mr uh, uh, sahid master sir a retiree Yes, you're a retiree, and and you know we know that we, the the perception is when you say retiree, you're thinking sixty and above. So I didn't. I I was thinking I, I you know like how they don't ask ladies their age nowadays. They say they don't ask men yeah. their age as well. So I didn't want to do that. But then the interesting part about that story was the decision you made, and having made it at that time of your life. What did it take? for you to get to that point what did you have to do i know i don't want you to give it all now because it's what we're talking about pretty much throughout the, the this episode but just to that point what is that one thing that you you think you did right to get you prepared for that move uh, thank you thank you very much uh, caritas and very good morning uh, members uh, viewers i it, it appears as if it was an an abrupt or instant decision, but it's a decision that I prepared myself for five years. When when I made 50, that was in December 2017, and retirement age in PwC was 60, I decided that I'll live at 55. And the moment I made that decision, it meant preparing oneself in so many different ways, one of which hopefully we'll get into at some point is looking at what it is that I'm spending now, how much I'll need once I leave for my employment. But there I say, I actually, retirement is an English word, and I think it's the word that we have here because of um, the, the, law, the rules, the reg regulations, if we're talking about NSSF Act and all sorts of other employment law. But the message I gave to my colleagues in PwC and friends and family in particular, and we'll talk about family, how important it is to prepare a family for this kind of move, is actually I was transitioning. So I'm not retired. I don't think I'll ever <laughs> retire. I grew up in Masaka where we live on the farm and we plant and grow maize and bananas and coffee. I did that when I was a small boy up to the age of 13 when I went into a boarding school. I've now done a full circle. I'm back in Masaka. I'm growing maize. I'm growing coffee. I'm processing coffee. Um, most importantly, I've set up quite a number of uh, educational institutions and skilling the youth. So I don't see myself retiring. But the message to colleagues and contemporaries is that you will transition out of whatever it is that you're doing. Whenever you go and get a medical checkup, remind yourself that you want to live up to 90. But you're not going to continue doing what you're doing right now until 90. You are going to live longer, most likely longer, I hope, than you've lived working. So I worked in PwC for 27 years. Prior to that, I was somewhere else for four years. I would say I was in formal employment for 30 years. I have got a second half where I believe I'm going to be around for another 40 years. I'm only 55, and I cannot call that retiring. It is transitioning, and I hope by the end of the two hours, many of you will have got some tips on how to prepare for that transition. Back to you, Caritas. Hey, I told you, today's episode, hey, hey, we are transitioners, and we're going to also teach you how to transition. That's the new word, transitioners. Now, the one thing that, we've not that I've noticed is um, the same way, th okay, okay, this is my observation, by the way, um, women, they be as if not wanting to grow old. Eh? Where we struggle with age, you want to cut your miyaka, you don't want to be. You want to be for over 20. Men have also grown into that area. So all of us as humans have gone into that space. And, and, and for many different reasons, whether it is, we'll say, social reasons or like now in employment, you're probably going to cut your age. It's not only sportsmen that are doing that. So even in formal employment, you're there struggling, you're, you know, keeping in there to make sure you, you, you're fighting with 
the transition. Yo, I think it's also the fear of the unknown, of the fear of even just taking that step. You're like, Kakati, if I move, I become former. Am I ready to be former? You know, you, I, and it's a transition we have to go through. But here is something that I'm going to tell you that when I was doing some research on this end, um, the recent cause of worry is the rise in, in, uh, in uh, retirement anxiety. And the reason why is uh, people get attached. You're attached to where you work, you're in corporate, you're wherever you are, you're attached to that life. You're attached to that which you know then. So you, you, you worry about moving on. And yet, you're, you're worrying, but the, the years are moving on. So the transition is happening, regardless whether you're with it or not, it is happening. So you're stuck in there and you, you're not helping yourself. You're not helping the situation. You're not figuring out how do I prepare for that time that is oncoming because it is oncoming. We can't fight it. And that's the reality that I really want you to take in today, that the time is going to come, whether or not you want it. And I want God to grant you so many years so you're able to have that time or to reach that time. But here's what we are saying. To avoid that uh, retirement anxiety, you may be in your 20s, in your 30s, and you're saying, abundance entirely. Time flies, like in a blink of an eye, you're going to be 50 and you're going to be saying, oh, Lord, what do I now do? That's the conversation we're having here today. And, and I'm telling you, I have the perfect guests. I mean, one is a retiree. I don't know about David. That, but I, one thing I have understood from the little that we've talked about today is that retiree doesn't need to be a scary word or a scary place to be. All you need to do is to prepare for that. So how do we do that? Of course, in SSF, like we said, the, uh, headmaster, sir, you said you take, we build, you build, you grow, then you, you eat. But now we want to know how you are going to eat because <laughs> we have to prepare you for the eating. It, is not, it has to be a balanced diet. So you need to figure out how to, to, find a, a, to create a bigger field to play on. So let's continue with this conversation today. And, and the first thing that I'm going to get into, first of all, is um, let's first talk about your understanding. We're going to keep going back to your uh, bit of the profile, and then also uh, also a bit of your financial journeys and what those mistakes. Me, I've talked about mine, started a business, and it went, <laughs> yeah, it went the opposite direction. But I learned my lessons. So let's first of all talk about if 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 I mentioned the word uh, the words a good financial cycle. What is a good financial cycle? And I'll start with you. I'll start with you. Yes. Right, a good financial cycle. I think um, I, let me simplify it. I know many of uh, the members watching may be 50 or and above, people who are about to access their benefits from, from, from the fund. But um, I became partner at the age of, I think, 35 or 37. And, and when you're a partner in a professional services firm, you cease to be an employee. And as a result, the firm stops contributing to you, uh, contributing on your behalf to the fund, and also you stop contributing. I wish I had continued contributing because when um, I came here in December when I was 55 to access my money, I stopped contributing nearly 17 years ago. And the little money that was there had actually grown in a manner that was quite amazing. And, and I call that the power of compounding. And, and there are so many 30-somethings and late 20s right now in very good jobs, um, in, in the telcos, in financial services, insurance, in the corporate, the, the, you know, the corporate uh, cool guys who are supporting all sorts of interesting teams and, and, and buying a lot of, uh, spending a lot of money on fancy drinks. And I'm not saying you shouldn't spend it, but if you are earning 10 million shillings, and they're quite a number, I believe that you can afford to put aside an additional 15% um, as a voluntary contribution to the fund over and above the five that is mandatory and the 10 that the company pays for you. And I did the numbers. And if you contribute 1.5 million and all it takes is just to do some adjustment in your expenditure, and I know you can afford to do it. 
you'll be surprised that a year it means 1.5 times 12 is 18 million 20 years 360 million but listen to this the power of compounding means that if you do that for 20 years caritas get how much guess how much you'll have after 20 years in the fund here please tell me 1 billion shillings so you can become a billionaire if you are 30 now and you're going to access your funds 20 years from NSSF by simply putting there 1.5 million extra over what you're putting there. And I know there are lots of people now running spreadsheets and trying to work out what the number here is. The ISA have assumed that the fund will be giving you 12%. And it's been giving us 12% for the last so many years until um, last year. And last year's um, return was also a very good one in my view given what was going on in the financial world. So life cycle, start now. Save. You don't need a reason to save. Just save. Many of you get paid bonuses, additional increments, and you think you're still young. You think you shouldn't be doing it until you're 35. It will be late by that time. And I'll share a personal story of how I've managed to do it. But I'll stop there for now. I like the personal stories. You went into compounding very quickly. I want to learn, but you're still going to tell us a bit about that. I want to understand it. I want to understand more about what that means for a person also watching because uh, we're taking lessons away. So get that paper, pen, and make sure you take notes. They're going to help you a whole lot. So over to you, Sevo. Tell us what you think a good financial cycle would entail. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I wouldn't defer. I wouldn't defer. Uh, probably in the definition I wouldn't defer, in the practice I might defer. Mm -hmm. um, his was a good story, mine was it. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, I, uh, he, prepared, he took five years to, re to prepare to get out of retirement, I didn't. Uh, I kind of reached a stage in my life and I thought it's time to move on. Mm -hmm. Being in these NGOs, NGOs, and it was an intellectual mm -hmm. challenge I had. I thought that many of the NGOs create an entitlement mentality. And so after reasoning it back and forth and seeing some of the things that we do, I said, intellectually, I disagree with this approach. I can't stay here much longer. So I decided, I gave myself a timeline, 20, 2011, I said, time to get out. I said, uh, here we go. So I did. Um, good financial cycle? Well, I had some investments in Forex. Should I, am I allowed to say something? <laughs> Why that? did you right, whisper yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that and we, we need to whisper. So I had some, you know, something there, getting some capacity. I said, guys, why, why are people struggling if this money keeps coming in like that? Until I woke up one day and they said, the thing closed. And I said, can't close, can't close. You know, you know that, that initial reaction, it can't close. Denial. It had denial, it had closed. So then I, I hustled on. And then till one time I said, but there's any safe. One of these days, you know, I, I need to get it. So, um, so the good financial cycle, he has described it. May I only give you stories about what not to do. And that is, yes, that's where we, we will go to, we will get to, I want to get to those uh, um, decisions that many people make that are negative. But I mean, we don't see it until then. Uh, someone will come and give a friend, a relative, come, ninaka business plan, ninaka plan. And even the way they are speaking, Ogamba, you know, plan with Sijitwale, really, I will not grow. But yes, those, those decisions that people uh, make that, of course, later on turn into the wrong uh, ones. We're going to talk about also the power of compounding in just a little bit. But let's talk about, I wanted to talk to the people who are not members yet you know they have their own businesses like for example they are not into formal employment they don't have someone who is helping take put away grow waiting to hand over they don't have someone doing that and many times in the financial sense cheating at me when i get money in my hands it's like <laughs> that money has to leave my hands immediately so anyway, i need oh, okay how much need okay before i know it it's all gone so i mean putting it away and having someone to help you do that is like such a huge bonus because not everyone has that strength to actually put it away and ignore it you know so for those that are not doing it for those that are sitting on the side let's talk to them let's talk to them how can we get this I'll use the word compounding for now. How can we get this compounding going if they're not members here? Because what we're saying is our habits, that's what we're looking at. 
what our habits then lead to that final result that we want to be a positive one. So what can we do for now, uh, away from uh, those expensive drinks that, you know, those those unnecessary expenditures that come in. People will spend and they'll say, Sente Yang and Ajikoze, I think I feel good to spend it. But let's let's be realistic and say, okay, what can I do if I'm not putting away, if I don't have somebody helping me put away, how can I still get that compound that, you know, that you were talking about? Yeah, uh, thanks, Caritas. I, I have to say, I think for me, I, I've been very lucky and, 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 I, and I find it more comfortable using personal stories mm -hmm. because it's, it's, I've lived that, that story. So, so many years ago, about 30 or thereabouts, I was a student uh, in... in in the UK, actually, no, I was working already. But I, I attended a financial literacy uh, class. And this lady told me something that stayed with me forever. He said, saving is, is a culture, saving is a behavior, it is a practice. We all think that we should wait until tomorrow. We think it is for old people and it's not for the young people. But he said that the earlier you start, the better. And and he said, without even knowing where you're going to retire, without even knowing how much you need when you retire, um, I'll give you a very simple formula, and I'm going to share it. Get your age, uh, looking around, <laughs> divide it by two. Mm -hmm. So if you're 25, um, divide that by two, you get 12.5%. Uh, mes her message was, save that as, 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 as what? As a um, percentage of your take-home pay. Um, when, when you think about um, the NSSF, you say it's a big percentage, but NSSF is 15%. So the company puts for you 10, you put there 5. So that formula is based on the person who is 30. Many of us start working before 30. So if at 30, NSSF is, 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 is uh, collecting 15% on your behalf, then you are there. But when you're 35, the, the message I said earlier on with the power of compounding and also voluntary contribution, increase it. When you're 40, aim, and you, and you can afford it. Because, ladies and gentlemen, everybody right now is earning easily three times how much they were earning 10 years ago, depending on where you're working. When I think about the audience that we are talking to here. So my advice is save and start early. Uh, Caritas, I think at some point, we'll talk about saving products and real estate and all sorts of other things. But you, the lady who has a salon, you know, the gentleman who has a mechanic somewhere in downtown, um, you know, you have so much cash. And at times, you know, you fail to distinguish between savings and profit and capital. And, and, and you know, you just look at it as your money until something goes belly up and then you have nothing to show for it. Um, the rule of the thumb is that you should have at least three months, three months um, money. Um, and, 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 and three months money in the sense that, and I saw it during, during lockdown, after two weeks, people were saying, we want to access our funds. I said, man, you've been working for 20 years and you cannot, you cannot survive two weeks uh, and you want to access your money at NSSF. But that said a lot about uh, our resilience, financial resilience at a personal level. So at the very minimum, you should always prepare that you might be three months be transitioning between one job to another. So you should have money that pays a mortgage or rent for three months pay school fees for a whole term without a paycheck, pays your medical if you don't have medical insurance, and also pays all your bills. Three months is the lowest. You know, in, in other parts of the world, they say six months. So if you are self-employed, make sure that you have savings that can cover you and all your outgoings for a minimum of three months. But most importantly, come and register with the NSSF because we'll say, I'm saying it for the third time, the power of compounding. It's amazing how much a million shillings every month in NSSF can turn out to be after 15 years. And unless you're planning to die soon, and even if you're planning to die soon, the beneficiaries will benefit from it. So come save with these guys because they look after the money quite well. But... I'll, talk, I'll tell you my story, what I did with my money as well. I've got stories, by the way. Yes, I want to hear them. I want to hear the ones that knocked you down, the ones that then took you off, you know. Yes, and, and again, what you've just said, from what you've said, it's the other thing of, you know, when you said it and the lady said that's a, a big percentage. It is that thing that I said, when it is you voluntarily picking that money to put your gamba, <laughs> yink, 
would have I would have done this and the other with the money. So you, you, your option to put it there is not your immediate. So over to you, David. All right. Um, and the question is just uh, generally about uh, where to put the money and things like that. Some um, advice, some, some advice some for advice. those who are not. For those ones who are yeah. not. Um, okay, one of the things you said is that I give a lot of financial literacy advice. And uh, over, the, over the years, I've changed how I give it. At the beginning, you're babysitting people and asking them, or almost kind of pleading, trying to give them the numbers and asking people to, you know, to save their money. Now, reach a stage where I can tell the guy, you reap what you sow. You don't save, you don't get. Period. I think people have looked at it that uh, the saving is a debatable thing. If you choose that way, there's a result for that. All right? What we'll tell you is that choose voluntarily to put money aside. Um, there's a quote I got from the late uh, Archbishop Nkoyo. He said this, Kule saint is ono lekao. Si saint is in lekao. Putting it in English, make money that you'll be able to leave behind. Not money that will run out before you, get, you check out. All right? So sometimes some people need a, a stick. And since the headmaster here, I mean, he'd probably understand it a lot better. So for me now, where I've reached, I don't plead with you. I just tell you either save or be ready for the consequences. Period. I like that you've spoken like a real teacher. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Uh, so I should, yeah, 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 all right. <laughs> uh, no, D David, uh, I wanted to add something also from uh, the late Archbishop Nkoyo. Mm. And he said, You know, the problem is in delaying. Delay. Do whatever it is that you can do now. Mm. And I'm saying, please start saving now. Because if you don't, uh, in Uganda, we call it Okweri and Jaulo. Mm. Because you, you become a problem to people. And, and it will be so unfortunate that uh, you are being described as a former. And, and again, we'll talk about that. Because there's no, but nobody should be described as a former. You should transition out of whatever you're doing and become something else and something else. And we are such transitional people. We're in primary school and went to secondary school mm. and went to university. And we've been transitioning almost mm. like every three, four years into mm. something different. Mm. And then suddenly at 50, 55, you want to be labeled something that you did, which was just a job. Mm. And you lose your identity simply because you were so and so, and for that matter, you are former so and so for mm. the next so many years. Mm. And no way, it mm. shouldn't. I like that. I'm telling you, we're talking serious business today. I, uh, you know, we're not messing uh, around with time. And I like what uh, Francis said that, you know, we, we were transitioning, okay, then what happened? Why are we now fighting with the transition? Why, <laughs> why are we letting go of that? We weren't we in control of that. And tell a friend to tell a friend, we are right now on all our platforms across on NSF, NSSFUG. So do tell a friend to tell a friend. And keep those questions coming in. We will be answering them. No, my panelists will be answering them. I'm not the one answering them. The experts are here, not me. I'm here to just make sure that they get the quest I get the questions across. And now I wanted first go first into uh, personal stories. I um, we're talking about business, and you know, I left mainstream, you know, employment, you know, and there's something about it that that that. That's why I think that, that that problem comes up of former of, of having to stick with it because you get very comfortable with where you are. You you stick in there and when that table is shaken, you're like, ooh, um, what do I now do? So th the first thing me I'll say is don't get comfortable. Don't get comfortable uh, where you are. Don't get comfortable with that monthly. That monthly tends to make people very comfortable because you feel like, ah, okay, Kastad, Saswanyumba, okay, when Sarakweza, school fees, okay. Tujak Sobolo Kulia, we're good to go. But now we are talking about the future. We're talking long term. We're saying, look, if you were to lose that job today, what would you do? Where would you go? What would happen with you? And also for the future, we are saying there will be a time when <laughs> your em employers will not need your services anymore because of age factor, because of because you cannot manage your physical, maybe can no longer handle the strain uh, with your job. Then what do you do? We don't want you going into an anxiety moment of what do I do now? You're looking back, you're lost, you have so much time, you have on your hands, you don't know what to do with it. You don't have any funds on you, so you don't even know what to do with life. And so we're trying to talk about that today, and we're saying how do we avoid that from happening? What can we do? What 
things can we put in place, but also how can we avoid making the same mistakes that we made over and over? So I left main uh, employment, mainstream uh, employment and started my own business. And that's when I understood a lot of things. That first question that I asked, I think, was for me. Mm -hmm. I had to be a bit selfish, but yes, it was for me and many of you. The good, that good financial cycle, you know, especially when you're your own boss. Uh, sometimes you could get lost in there because you feel you're your own boss. So, I want us to go through some of our personal stories. Let's first start with those mistakes, those financial mistakes where you sit back and say, hi, that one took me down or that one almost had me or it taught me a thing or two. And, and it could be uh, wrapped in misconceptions and myths of people in terms of businesses to invest in. It could be just that de financial decision that you took that should have, you wished someone had told you about. Yeah. So I'll start with you, Francis. Uh, I've made made lots of mistakes. <laughs> uh, I think the first one, uh, being being a, a fairly financially literate person, maybe also the accountant in me, I was at some point quite risk averse and also having audited a few banks, I would see how much they're charging in terms of interest and also how much uh, they are paying in deposits in terms of interest and the, and, 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 you know, the, 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 the gap in between. So I decided to use, I decided to save and then uh, build, uh, develop property. So uh, I, I, I spent quite a lot of money on a block of flats, which I would say about 80% was my own money. And, and then afterwards I thought, I've spent so much money uh, putting up apartments, and I'm going to wait 12 years to get that money back. So I then went to on another course on real estate and all these uh, people who make money, and then I learned that people make money in real estate by using other people's money. So you don't use your own money, which you already have, I don't, uh, and then put it in brick and mortar, and then wait 10 years to get it back as in principle, and then after 10 years, you start earning interest. When you could have gone to NSSF, you could have gone to the Bank of Uganda and bought a treasury bill, you could have gone to ICA or Mutual, you know, uh, Jubilee, whoever, and bought a mutual fund. You could have bon gone on the stock exchange and, 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 and did what? And bought shares. Um, that's, that's a lesson learned. So there are lots of people who may be thinking that at 55, they'll come and collect their, uh, you know, lump sum and then go, but and kiss it. Yeah. Uh, later on. I wanted us to go because you had an interesting conversation about that before. Um, yeah. Yeah. We'll so, so that was a lesson, and and my money is tied in brick and mortar, and mm. I enjoy building. I don't like collecting rent, and my wife handles the the real estate side of our business, and I have no patience. I also very kind at times I allow people to stay in the properties without <laughs> hustling them. I go in there and I see the mother, the child, the children and they have sofa and you know fridge and say now where do they go? So I I I am not good at those things. Uh, secondly I had I joined PwC in nineteen ninety six in the UK and there used to be a private pension fund. Then that was Coopers and Live Brand. Then on the merger uh, PwC and PW Pricewaterhouse and Coopers and Library became PwC. So that, that uh, pension fund was phased out, but they asked people who are interested to continue contributing voluntarily. Back then, uh, I was paying in 400 pounds a month, and, 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 and that is 1996. So in 1998, I opted to stay in, um, but I continued paying 400 a month, and I did that for about 26 or seven years. I I could have afforded to pay a lot more into that fund. Yeah, I recently got a statement of what was there. It was actually very impressive, tidy sum in hard currency. I only wished I'd paid in more. So again, message very consistent. Those of you who are young, they have spending money, please start now. I like that. Don't wait. Start now. The time is now. The time is now. That's, I think it should even just be a hashtag. Hashtag the time is now. Hashtag start now. Yeah. Uh, th then over to you, David. Tell us what your, your, the one that you feel you want to share. Um, it's interesting. Um, just sitting here, I, I'm, I'm glad I came with a notebook. Um, 
so when I hear his story, it's the kind of stories that I've also come across in the textbooks, and um, and I was just wishing, maybe I should have read those books a lot earlier. Uh, mine, mine were, were mistakes, were mistakes. So I'll, I'll start with some of the a, a critical mistake, or maybe two things. One, when people are going to retire, they've got a false belief that money. You know, most people have this belief that money is the solution. They think that if I got the money, I'm going to be able to. If I got the money, I'm, I'm going to be able to. What I've learned. If you've got the money, watch it. You're about to make a mistake. They, people don't listen well when they have the money. A key thing is the whole thing that is also talked about is other people's money. Use other people's money. That's the whole issue of leverage. If you've got whatever hundreds of millions or something like that, don't use it. Leverage it. It just means it's like a selfie stick when you're taking a photo. You know, you, you could do a lot more. But you know when we leave employment we come with self-esteem issues. And when we talk about things like former, former, we are, we are living in past glory. When I voluntarily went out of my job, the first day was difficult because go where now? <laughs> you know, I saw it on that slide there, and it's real, and these Apollos, you know, they're headmasters, he's writing these things, and they, they don't know the emotions that that thing goes with, all right? Then after some time, you know, the kids, even two days, I think about three days ago, we talking about it. They'd ask, but we're always going to school and leaving you here. <laughs> so I knew, you've got to go somewhere. So I did. Wake up every morning, put on my suit, go to Oasis. I used that time to read. I read a lot of stuff. All right? Another thing that people, why they make mistakes, they don't study. They don't talk to people that have made it. Or ego comes in in the in the way when they hear your story, they think I can do better. They don't hear well. Many people on the final story, they don't like the disciplines. What did he do? Can you imagine saving in hard currency? What? Oh, well, anyway, that's a that, that's a story for another day. Pounds, you know, <laughs> you know, people are saving. You want to hear what is he doing now? Yeah. What what where can I invest? It is the habits. It's the habit. So I told you my first mistake was that thing of forex. I, I got hit, Forex one, got hit. I said, this is good money. Any other person doing Forex, I put there. Forex two, got hit. <laughs> I said, uh, okay, okay, this thing might not be for me. So they, they, there's this another, uh, another business which came in Telex, whatever. I was awake. People told me, come, come, come. I was awake, <laughs> all right? And sometimes when people get those hits, that's how you'll wake up. Caritas, the sad thing, some of the people listening or watching, that's when they'll wake up. We're hoping you don't have to do that. But for me, what happened after that, I started reading lots of books. Financial literacy books. One Minute Millionaire. man in Babylon. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I don't know, many people have told me, I've read that one. Have you really? What that book says, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, there's the main title, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Subtitle. What the rich do that the poor and the middle class don't. That's the real heading. So some people just say, it's not just reading and knowing how much you, you know, you've know you read. But after reading those things, yeah, the cacao started going up. Me, I've hit zero. I hit zero. When, when, when uh, you know, to the point that, uh, you know, I had a very long cable. Yeah, tap electricity from my neighbor there, yeah, you know. And then when you've done that, you're, you're kind of kind of careful. Don't overload the electricity because this bill is going to go up. Yeah, yeah. No, you had given me permission, but then you're, you're very sensitive. You know, it could, you know, hey, take off the fridge, take off the fridge. I might, you know, I've, I've not paid my bill. That's why I'm, you know, in the dark, you know. And one of the things that happened there, the wife never said, yes, 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 I provide over the home, what's happening? So I learned that, those things. I even had a place in Namwonga where you could go and eat food and feel satisfied like you want to sleep. Where people in town are spending 15k and stuff like that. Now, but I also found out that at zero people exist. Yeah. You know, if I go there and you're focusing on your plate, on your plate, on your plate, then I said, but let me look around, you know. <laughs> you know? And I realized people exist, but I knew I don't want to be here. It's time to go up. Don't get there. Those of you watching, don't get this false belief that the money will solve everything. It took me two years to regain my confidence. I'd been a trainer, but without that organizational business card, I minimized myself. And some of these CEOs are going to go through that. They think that it's the business card that makes you. No, it is you, who you are. 
but you might have to go through that journey of realizing business card it took me two years and i'm a trainer and once i got up from there so i just say be careful of the money put your uh, you know self-esteem in check speak to yourself have the self-esteem start the habits thank you today's lesson is proper all round or uh, well rounded it's everywhere it's on your emotions as well self-esteem that and that is what messes with people eventually then you hear people are depressed people have you know chosen other lifestyles it's because of that so while you're preparing yourself financially prepare yourself in those other areas as well hey today's kabozi by the way i have questions for you i do have questions for you already coming in and i i, I also want us to go into the the part about family because of course as we're doing all these things as you're making all these plans there is family be it immediate or extended and in the african setting yeah it can extend as far as far and so yeah we're going to talk about that in just a bit but um I, let me just throw in some of the questions that have come in and thanks people thank you very much for plugging in across all our social media platforms and um our first questions uh question is what advice do you give those who are about 40 what percentage should they save? And I think you'll both answer it. I think I'll start with you. Yes, so about 40, of course about 40 could be 41, could be 45, could be 55. But um, the, the, the message I shared earlier on, which is also something I learned from my financial literacy class of about 35 or so years ago, was get your age divide by two, and that is the percentage. So if you're, th if you're 40, already company is contributing 10% for you, you're contributing 5%, that is 15. According to my formula, if you're 40, you should be putting aside uh, 40, uh, 20%, 20%, yeah, 40 divided by two. And by the way, I at some point, it doesn't continue all the way up to 55, because if you start early, it means by the time you get to, six to 50, you actually have got a nice pot of, of uh, money, wherever it is, and we'll talk about also portfolio and rebalancing and, and, and return on investment. We need to talk about the difference between saving and investing because, again, people also struggle with that. So, so the earlier you start, the better. And then your risk appetite also matters. You know, is it equities? Is it bonds, treasury bills, you know, mutual funds? Is it real estate? Is it lending to your cousins and nephews and investing in their businesses and, and making sure that they pay back? Whatever it is. And, and there comes a point in one's life where you want to have as much of your savings and investments in liquid assets as possible. We saw it during the COVID lockdown where we have so many rich people, a gaga, somebody has like a, a Vyapa titles, about 30 of them. But actually, he needs forty thousand dollars to get a private ambulance to fly him somewhere, wherever, and, and 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 he doesn't have that cash. But he has he has titles. So there comes a point when those titles are just meaningless, uh, unless you have cash. Yeah. But you have to have the right portfolio. The early years are for building and accumulating the wealth and investing properly. Um, I'm not, I don't want to pretend to be a financial advisor here. I'm simply saying that if you are that way inclined please seek financial advice because a lot of the insurance companies and money markets and collective investment schemes have very, very good people and have benefited a lot. Uh, when it comes to saving for children's education, there are some really, really good plans on the market at the moment. Because at the end of the day, you need to ask yourself, why do you work? Because at times we don't ask that question. Why do you work? You must be able to answer that question. Secondly, to add on to the point David said earlier on, um, if you're 50, going to 55, um, you actually are going to have a very productive second half of your life. But remember that if you're 60, if you're 50, you're not going to, you, you've, you've been around for the longest time of your life, sad as it may sound. Yeah? So unless you're going to live to 100, and I don't think there are many people who want to live to 100, and I don't know what quality of life you'll have at 100. So if you're 55 like me, I know that I've lived the greater part of my life on earth already. So I'm going to make my next 30 years very, very meaningful, very impactful, very fulfilling. I'm not going to query an or in any way whatsoever. And I'm going to make sure that, you know, life is for living. And it's for that matter that you want to be able to do things that are for you. Because there are times when we worry so much about everybody else 
and we never think about ourselves. And then say, hey, but you can't do that. You know, you need to think about that. Yeah, I say, yeah, but you cannot give what you don't have. On the plane, they say, first wear your oxygen mask before you help all the others. You need to first help yourself. So you need to be in good health. You need to be financially aware, financially literate, and uh, financially stable. And actually, this conversation about financial literacy, for me, I think it's about life planning. You know, because money is an enabler. Money, money, money is just, it's just that, it's an enabler. You need to have a plan. You can have lots of money. There are people who have stolen money. And they don't know what to do with it. And nobody wants to touch it. Nobody even wants to hang out with them because they are thieves. I was like, but I have money, but, but you're a thief. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so over to you, David. I, I like that. They, they, they can't hang out with you because you're a thief. Um, uh, is that an interesting question? Yeah, about 40, how much should you save? Uh, one of the things I think that that question is basically saying maybe the person hasn't started. Okay. Um, sometimes, uh, okay, I'll use some religious examples because they're a religious uh, nation. There are some religions, they do zaka. Is it? They, they learn to give. There are other people that are familiar with things like tithe. So sometimes in, in, in literacy classes, we tell you, tithe 10% monthly, keep 10%, save 10%, put aside uh, maybe 10% for investment. So that's that's 30% all gone. Live off 70. Learn to live within the 70. Because the more money you get, needs can expand. You know, if you don't have the habits, you get uh, double the salary, you will find that it's still not enough. So if you just want to start, the discipline is at least start off with 10%. If you know you gave 100K in the church or in the mosque or wherever you go, the question would be, where is yours? Because what you save and invest is basically your future, all right? So that, that could be um, a, a, a beginning minute for that particular person. Um, and then just the other thing is that the habit of regular, regularity. If you can't start with 10%, but it's your life we're talking about, and if you remember the, the numbers that uh, Francis gave, they're good numbers if you put it, if you put it to good use. Mm. Right, but then we also have a twist. If you save, do you save um, endlessly? And there's something that you talked about in three months. Sometimes in financial literacy, we talk about it as a, a, a buffer. Have between three and six months living expenses. All right? And then the rest of the money, put it to use. Leverage means... Give your money a job. Some of us, the, the, the money has a job. You enter the bank, they say, Banker! Atuse! And then you also fit in and say, On the house, on the house, on the house. You don't disappoint. You don't disappoint on the house, on the house. No. Keep your money, buffer. The extra money, please invest it. So start off with 10%. If you're not yet, regularity is the issue. Not this, you know, sprint you put in there and then, then rest a bit. And then you, you know, no, no, no. The issue is the habit. Thank you. I like that. The habit, consistency, mm -hmm. beginning it and continuing to see it through. Hey, hey, today, the, today's class, by the way, sir, headmaster, sir, to damn coaching with the same... <laughs> coaching okay so i'm going to throw in one more question before we go into uh that conversation on family uh th this uh question is uh mr kamleja beauty of compounding how can you relate unit trust and nssf nice uh it's it's a good one and i think uh david will will as as they expert will talk about it a bit more. Uh, but I'll tell you what um, unit trusts, mutual funds, NSSF, they all get their ma the money from you or you contribute into them and then they place it somewhere. So, so NSSF was speaking earlier on and, and Paul explained that the, the portfolio is about 80% in fixed income. Um, a lot of it is in treasury bills and bonds. About I think 12% is in equities and about six to eight percent is in real estate. So, so NSSF have been a member for quite some time. They've been paying an average of 12% per year. And again, of course, when you're 12%, you don't take it out, it adds on to, if you had 100 and then they pay you 12, then you don't take it out, it becomes 112. And then that is now the base for next year's 12%. That is what compounding is all about. And so, 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 they are able to give you 12% because they are putting your money somewhere where they earn 17% or 18%. So when I got my not so 
little money from them uh, five months ago, I bypassed them. And actually, I went straight to the government of Uganda, and, uh, and I'm a lender of money to government of Uganda, Caritas. Hey, only the need was <laughs> not even say. just here. <laughs> <laughs> see the, the voice has changed. See the regular. <laughs> see the regular. So, <laughs> so, so, so I lend money to the government. You guys, when you are there and you hear the government is struggling with the national debt, I'm one of those people, our Anja government. <laughs> but most importantly, I, I now do what NSS was doing for me. And, and the same happens to unit trusts. You know, they are giving you 11, 12 percent because they also put that money. But the beauty with those trusts is that there is a portfolio. For you, if you put your money in just one basket and things go belly up, and it has happened to me, you know, some things when they are too good to be true, at times they are too good to be true. So I invested in some offshore uh, bond uh, so many years ago, and, and I lost money. Eh? But before I lost money, I was getting 12% interest on hard currency. 12%. Somebody explained what would they do with that money and all sorts of interesting things. It, they're in real estate and they're in the Middle East. So mutual funds, unit trusts, they are very good because it's a basket. So you are not in it alone if things go wrong. Um, NSSF is very good because it is compounding. Mutual trusts and unit trusts, they give you annually. But also they are good in the sense that you can take a salary. So if you have 100 million shillings and you put it into a mutual trust or a unit trust which pays you 12 percent you actually are getting 12 month, 12 percent 12 million every year which is about 1 million every month and and when i looked at the numbers here and and i was told that um you know 93 percent or something like that are people who have less than 50, 50 or 5 million shillings it means many of the members of the fund don't have so much money in the fund and it's really important to be realistic for that matter. And that means a person who has 50 million and you can get 12%, that is 6 million. That 6 million is half a million every month. And chances are that even you've been getting half a million every month anyway in terms of your salary. So you can live on that. So you need to be realistic. And, and I want also to compliment a very, very good point, which I can relate with uh, uh, having been uh, uh, was described all, all sorts of um, words when I left PwC. But it's very, very important for the senior executives watching and listening to us to get that point in life where you distinguish who you are from what you do. Because the moment you become, you be, the moment you lose your identity and you just become Mr. C or Mr. MD or whatever, you are going to struggle to adjust to life after that. Regardless of how much money you have, I can assure you, you're going to struggle. So you have to be very deliberate and intentional about having a life and having relevance outside that office of yours and that's what you're going to be anyway for the next 30 years. I really like it and I'll keep saying today's class is not regular, totally <laughs> regular. Okay, David, is. Uh, we're going to take your point before Mr. Headmaster continues that's to tell us his Francis, break. Uh, that that's really I know, right? I, was, I kind of looked and I uh, was wondering, uh, is this my neighbor? Yeah, yes, it is, uh, it, is, it is my neighbor. Um, he has basically, he said it all, all right? Uh, one of the, the, the differences I see between the two is that sometimes when your money is in MSSF, they, they kind of keep it out of your reach, so they, they kind of help you keep disciplined. Uh, many people, when, they, when they've got a problem and they know they've got access to money somewhere, they quickly go out and get it, and that could be the problem if they've got uh, like in a mutual trust or a unity trust where, where they can access it very easily, they could just say, I've got a problem, I'll, 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 and then, and, and then those, those false lies. I will replace it. So one of the key things actually about financial management is actually self-awareness. Know yourself, how well you do something, how you, do, how you struggle in some of these areas, and, uh, and the lies we can take, tell ourselves when we want to get our, our, our own way. So yeah, 12% doesn't uh, look much, but uh, it is much. And many people, when they, when, you know, many people, uh, maybe I've also put it this way, uh, if you're not doing business, you know, many people have gone into circles and stuff like that. And, 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 and in many people's minds, 12 looks small. All right. And, uh, and many people sort of miss out on this word per annum, per month. I'm not going to borrow from the bank. It is more expensive than my circle. Really? You know, because it's 10%, you know, per, per month. If you multiply that into a year, that's 120 percent. There's no bank which would do that. So financial literacy basically is, is helpful in that uh, in that particular area. 
please put money away and let it compound. I've done that with my daughters, uh, one of them three months ago, finished university, we said we go. All right, has her own account, then I took another. I said, let, 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 you know, and you know, you have to be a wise because even when you go to the bank, they'll tell you put a fixed deposit, and you know, not in bonds and what. Everybody's, it's a market. Mm. If you put here, I can make some kind more money than other. So go there, get educated, and then put your money aside. Thank you. Thank you so, so <coughs> much. And like we said, uh, first of all, thank you very much for all being a part of this across our social media platforms. Two hours is so little for this one. We need coaching classes. But over to you, Mr. Headmaster, to see if those coaching classes will hold. Thank you. Thank you so much, Caritas. Thank you, Francis. Thank you, David. I um, I, I feel like I, I have arrived in life. When, when, when I stand next to these guys and I call them Francis, David, guys, I, we know each other from us from way far. City regular, Nangi, city regular. One of the things that they, 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 uh, they just challenge me to doing is some of these things you earn your right to say them. You can stand and say, I am a lender. You, because you have, you have put money there. So while you are on your desk, the different persons watching us here, you're on your desks, who are you? Who are you outside that job? When we strip you of that job, who are you? When you stand there, when your family is praising you, like me, I, in, in, in the clan, I may be one of those they call me the rich person because they see me on TV. But if I'm outside NSSF, who am I? Can I stand by myself? Can I actually do, uh, get, get out and I say, this is Mboa Apollo? So who are you? And you can get these things done by your action. So thank you so much, Francis. Thank you so much, David. Thank you so much, Caritas. Uh, this is our first half. We are going for the next half. And in the, this next half, one of the things and I've, I've gotten here to be asked that what do that you someone is saying you mentioned that these people are busy and they are in retirement what do they do with their retirement how come all of a sudden they are busy one one thing i can tell you before they even answer they are not busy working for money they are busy seeing money work for them that 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 i can attest to it and probably they'll be generous enough to share with us uh, some of those things one of the th um I, I want to just pick out some things and re-emphasize here i've been taking my notes money is habits we have said this over and over again. And I, I meet in the corridors, both at the workplace and different other places, and people tell me, but you are running a financial literacy um, agenda at NSSF. Why aren't you telling us about all those sophisticated things? Why aren't you telling us about the treasury bills? And I look at this person. He has take, he, they usually take some time, and they educate me and tell me all the things that I, sh I should be telling them about. Then I ask them one question. Why, aren't you, why don't you know about these things? Because the same phone they are holding and uh, is doing a lot of things, WhatsApp, YouTube, what, Facebook, uh, uh, chat, GDP, all those things, can actually tell them about those things. But why? what is it that is failing them to reach into their phone? And instead of asking what the treasury bill rate is today, they will ask about the neighbor, what the neighbor is doing, what, what's the latest, what, uh, what is man you doing today. I, I mean, all those things. No offense, my, uh, uh, football fans. All those things you can't influence. Why can't you just use your phone to do that? So I tell them, the only reason we, we talk about habits is because your problems are not the lack of options or the lack of knowledge of options. Your problems are with your habits. When you wake up in the morning, you choose what to do with your phone. That's your habit. That phone can make you money. It can make you lose money. There are people with smaller phones that make more money with people than people with bigger phones. iPhone 13. No, 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 no offense. Anyway. anyway, but money is habits, and I can tell you, I can quantify this and say it is 90. Uh, wealth is 95 percent habits. 95 percent, just 5 percent money. Why do you work? Why do you work? Uh, start asking yourself, why do I actually work? Some of us, it is by coincidence. We we find ourselves working. But then while you continue working, why? Keep asking yourself that question. It will put so many things in perspective. You will even understand what salary I should ask for because of what you are actually giving. The quality of your examples. I, I, I was sitting back and, and listening in, and um, Francis gave an example. When you're in the plane, they say, put your mask on, then help the other person. Then I realized that it becomes second nature. For someone to give, there are people out there, allow me to, I, I'm trying to put this gently, but it becomes second nature to use examples like planes, like, for other people it is a, it is a myth. 
while you, you, you were thinking, well, now what is he talking about, mask first? No, it is becoming significant in nature. So the quality of your life determines the quality of your speech. What is your speech happening? What is, what, what are, what is happening in your speech? What quality of life are you living? Are you the person we are talking about? Ah, ugaliwa, wanangi, the boda boda people, those boda boda people. That is your quality of life. Amazigao, the, you are talking about the, all the different drainages and uh, different where you need to skip over to go to your home. That's your quality of life. Change your speech. And all this, of course, you can't do this by, allow me to use this, uh, for, uh, for, uh, forgive us for using so much French to say, Teweria Konjauro. You are only being a broke on yourself when you choose not to save. You are. The only money that is truly, truly yours is the money you have chosen, chosen to save and has gone into investment. All the other money you are receiving it on behalf of the others. You are receiving it on behalf of your landlords. You are receiving it on behalf of your children. Receiving it on behalf of your spouse. You pick it and then take it to them. Actually, when your landlord, and I think Francis put it here gently, when your landlord comes to greet you, to ask you how you are, they're actually trying to see, are you okay to go and pick my money from? Your employer, because you're not working for yourself, you are working for this employer. So when you save, you're actually getting that money. Allow me to stop here and I just remind people, I'm also not regular. Caritas, we need to hear how these gentlemen are, are spending <laughs> and how did they come to choose how they are spending there after 50 years. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Headmaster, sir. Thank you very much. And as time is really, really now catching up with us, um, I wanted us to talk about family, but then I would want both of you to first talk about <coughs> saving and investing. Saving and investing. Yeah, those are because I was noticing, uh, uh, Mr. Kamalja, when you mentioned it, there was some emphasis to it. There is a difference that people need to understand and uh, uh, what decision they end up taking in regard to these two, saving and investing from both of you. I'll start with you, Mr. Kamaja. Thank you, thank you, Caritas. Uh, I'm going to keep it really, really simple and then leave it uh, to my very good friend here to, to be the, the more complicated one. So saving is basically being very deliberate and intentional on how, what you do with your money. So you earn a million shillings. You have a choice of eating all of it as if there's no tomorrow or putting us away 30%. Yeah? So the money that you don't spend, that you don't eat, and you put it away for a reason, that is saving. And saving has to be part of your habit. I, I, lots of us go to the gym, and, and, and you, you don't skip going to the gym for five days, then you go there one day and you lift every metal and every equipment and whatever. And, you know, it's not about intensity. It's about frequency, and it's about um, consistency. So, so you need to get into the habit of putting away some money and don't eat all of it. Now, investing is once you put it away, once you put it away, then what? Because you don't just put it in, in, under the pillow, under the mattress, and then you hope that it will be there tomorrow. So investing is basically having put aside some money, that money now should work for you. Because when you get to the advanced age of a person like myself, and you're no longer working for money, uh, you want to hope that whatever it is that you did for the last 30 years, now that money is working for you. So so and we'll build on to that. David, over to you. Thank you very much. The, the definitions are basically the same. And uh, where investment comes in very crucial is that it is something uh, that should, should, should finance the lifestyle that you've chosen. All right. Um, when you talk about uh, saving, we're basically saying you're getting a source of income and you're putting, deliberately putting something aside. And sometimes there's a, there's a, like a, a three kind of a three box image that I use. If you imagine that there's one box and that's when, that's your working life, career, work. That's when you get money to put aside. When you put it aside, to put aside into what? And some, the, the middle box now can now be business. And that's why many people do business. The challenge with that one, many people uh, take it as a destination. 
all right? But the issue about a business is just that it should be able to make money faster than your ability to make money as an individual. So I'd look at that middle box as a generator. Go, 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 go. So that it's ch kind of churning out money. When it churns out that money, put it into now something that can keep it, keep the value of the money. That's what now would call, this is just from a personal, you know, financial management perspective. That third box is what you'd call investments. It should be able to hold value. Some people it might be land, some people it might be, you know, the, the real estate that they've talked about, the rentals, such that it starts releasing slowly, slowly, slowly uh, to determine, to help you finance the kind of lifestyle uh, that you want. All right? Now, if to, 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 to speak a little bit into one of the questions that asked earlier, what keeps us busy? Now, it is like uh, a, a friend of mine, when they left uh, retirement, they, they retired early before this 50 thing. They got bored. And then they looked for employment again. But they taught me a word. I asked them, why are you doing this? They said, I have become an SME. Now, being in the financial things and NGOs, I knew SME. Small and medium size, he said, no. I have become a subject matter expert. Those of you that want to know what to do that will keep you busy, it is now your brand. If you have just been a former CEO, former D principal, former director, it means you didn't have an individual brand other than the title that you held. If you want to keep busy, create a brand. Let people come looking for you. All right? It can be a business subject matter area, strategic planning, materials development, whatever it is, helping people start up NGOs. You will keep busy, and then you, and some people even say, now why didn't I retire earlier? All right? So, retirement. Please look at it as it's just it's just like uh, you know these games that we watch. It's just somebody holding up cards and they're telling you so many minutes, you know, to the to the next half. It's not termination. It is just saying five more years to change to the next. You know, you know, three months. Now, now for the people listening, many of them, it's twelve months. It's just a card. Get ready. If you're on the on the on the lineup, warm up, warm up. And some of us speaking, it's actually going to be habits, not money. Because the people are talking to, and according to the statistics here, the money is there. How do they ensure they don't blow it? And then, just uh, become a subject matter expert. Thank you. Okay, you want to add to that? Yes, I want to add on to that, uh, on, on, on the question that came earlier, you know, what keeps those guys busy. Mm -hmm. So, so there, there are people, corporates, uh, who are so, so busy, being busy. But characters, they, they have nothing to show for all that busyness. Yeah? Mm. Yeah? And, 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 and even some people say, in the goal of the business, you, can, you can't see me, you can't get me. I was like, okay. But, but what do you have to show for all that? Yeah? So, so the, the, the beauty with this, this uh, I call it the second phase. Yeah? Because, because and, and in fact, the word, the, the, word, the, word, the word my wife uses is redeployed. I was redeployed. Yeah, yeah. And actually, I redeployed myself. I didn't wait for the age number of 60 to deploy me. I'm redeployed myself on my own terms. But most importantly, you, 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 you work so hard. And, and I pose the question, and I really people will reflect on it. Why do you work? Yeah? Um, so you work so much that you can get money, and then what? And then pay off the bills, and, and then what? And then what? And then, and, and then what? Once you ask yourself, like, and then what five times, you say, and then I can stop working and have a good life. And say, hey, you mean you're working so hard so that you can stop working? What an irony. Yeah? So you can actually short circuit that, yeah? If you're very deliberate and intentional on what you want in life, you can cut away the clutter, you can cut out the noise. At times we never run our own race. We are worried about what people are going to say. You know, you're always going to be poorer than somebody else. But is it a competition? Do you even know what they want in life? Because now they're building a house here, they moved to Lua, they're now in Munyonyo, now they have a, is it a VX, what is like, but do you need it? And most importantly, those of us who are parents, also we at times think and, and think that our parents, our children need so much stuff. But you'll be amazed. Yeah. They don't need stuff. In fact, they'll tell you, you sell that stuff. I don't need it. Yeah? They live a very simple life, the so-called Uber life. They are sharing everything from houses to cars to whatever on social media. And they don't care about your 13 titles and your 40 acres of pine trees. Yeah? And people are going to be disappointed when it comes to that transition because I have a 20-year-old daughter and, and, and there's no way I can pretend that she's going to 
in inherit my 60 acres of pine in Busunju. I'll be lying to myself. She's at the university in Birmingham. Yeah, I've got an older daughter. That one, you know, she has her own life, and I only fit in as and when she has time for me. So, <laughs> guys, you know, you've got to that stage in your life when you really have to put yourself first and also try and translate whatever success you've achieved in your career as a professional, as a corporate executive, into significance. And that's what social capital is all about. I like how we went well all the way and came back to social capital. Yes, relevance. That's so true. And it's a conversation I've been having of late with a couple of my friends. I say, you know what? I feel so comfortable with three handbags. Why did I used to have 10 handbags? Why did I have 400 pairs of shoes? Like, for what? Like, you're thinking, why did I have to accumulate all those things? What's the relevance of all those things? I think when you put, when you focus on the right uh, things, which is that relevance, after all the money is taken away, after you're no longer that busy, then what? Who are you? What are you all about? Those are the big questions. Almost like working backwards. It's like we're working backwards, and whichever way you look at it, we have to think about it. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask at least one more question from our audience, uh, from our viewers, before we talk about family, because you touched it just briefly there. And no matter what we say, family will pop up from whichever direction. It's a conversation that will pop up. So, uh, from our viewers, hmm, Bernard is asking, is investing my NSSF saving in money lending a good idea? Yeah, I think we start with you, David. It's interesting. Um, one of the things they say in personal finances is that don't ask for advice. Because many times the people are asking for advice when you have money. Uh, they, they, will not, they don't feel it. They'll not feel the pinch of it when it goes. Uh, money lending, there are lots of things about money lending. All right, let's assume you've got the certificates and the laws and all those sorts of things. There's collection. There's valuation. All right, there's, there's having it. There, there, there's, there's a lot. But sometimes people get it. There's also your own personality. You know, can you get it? Will you feel sympathetic? Can you discern somebody who's telling you the truth from who's telling you a lie? All those sorts of things come in. But sometimes when, uh, um, this is what I'd say, get an investment philosophy. Get an investment philosophy, get an investment framework. All right? There are books which can ask, uh, help you understand an investment framework. If, if I think of one uh, called the, 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 the Investment Habits of Warren Buffett and George Soros, one of the things they say, you start off from your personality. That shocked me. You start off from who you are. Before anybody tells you which investment area, who are you? What are your goals? Where are you headed? Those are the first questions to ask. Second level question is that, what business do I understand? If you understand it, then even the question is kind of redundant because now you know where, where, where you can go. I have a friend of mine. Uh, his mother used to run some restaurants in town. And I remember one time meeting him because I was helping his mother. And then he said, ah. I said, hey, I saw the, a new restaurant. He said, yeah, I fired the chef. I said, hey, what happened? A nimba. Then the guy made a comment. I know how many chaps come out of a two kilogram thing of X. I know how many what. I know. So he knew the business. So this chef who came in and thought I can tell you lies got to run for their money. So the principle there is know who you are know what you understand. If it was him asking, after all these years of financial experience, it, that would be a no-brainer because he knows, you know, he says, no, 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 that, you, you know, like, you know, many people write business plans and they talk about in year one, huge profits. A serious guy of business plans would know that really should possibly even be starting in the negatives. When are you going to get out? But nobody wants to finance a business plan which has those negatives. So people, you know, you know, you know, falter. My advice would be first study thyself. All right. The philosophers of long ago said, know thyself. Once you know thyself, then you can know what kind of return do you even want. Those ones promise, I know somebody was, who lived off that money lending. They were lending at, I think, uh, 15%, 20%. But that one even had uh, connections with certain courts, connections with certain police people. And then they knew, I only lent the, 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 these people of uh, charcoal. And then they charge 30%. But they knew their system. They had their system. Don't lend if you don't have a system. So a lot of those sorts of things come up. The, the question seems simple. There are very many things to put in place before you make that decision. And before that decision that you've made makes money for you. Thank you. 
Francis, you want to add on? Yeah, very, very briefly. I think for me, I would say also assess your relationship with money. Because at times we, we just go in a rat race, you know, work, get paid, you know, spend. Go back, work, get paid, spend. Pay a few bills, work, get but But just take time out, yeah, and, and assess the relationship that you exist between you and money. Because I, I've been an employer for quite so many years, and I've seen young people who join and paid, you know, entry level. Eight years later, they are earning like five times what they were earning, but they are in deeper debt, yeah, and and they are they are they are always trying to you know to to you know you you pay them more and then they adjust their lifestyle so that they can spend more and that that spending also puts them into more debt. So they talked about book David. Another book that is worth reading uh, is Psychology of Money. Uh, that is a book that um, is is a very easy user friendly book to read. Once you read it, then you get to realize that um, it's about you and your relationship with money. And then I, I said retirement, we're talking about retirement, but we are not retired and we are not going to retire anytime sooner. We are redeployed, we are transitioned, we are doing other things and we are more exciting, more interesting, busier. But most importantly, also prepare for that life and transition because characters, we professionals and, 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 um, and corporates, we get hung up with not just titles, but also what we read at university. And something that, and, and somebody describes themselves, you know, my background, you know, you, you read something for three years, you know, and, and even before you were at university for three years, you are somewhere else for like 18 years. Now you've been working for 20 years, and those three years are the ones defining you. So, so I've, I've and, and, and my colleagues, yes, okay, I think I'm meeting some raw nerves here, but I've been telling friends that do not get into a competency trap where you're saying, I'm a lawyer, I'm an accountant, and so what? You know, there's so many problems out there to solve. I have a school for deaf children. I will talk about that. I'm now running an institution for skilling the youth. I should have brought coffee, but I thought it would be unethical to advertise my coffee here. But now I process and brand and sell coffee. You're, you've really touched so many points that I do like, and some run in the room, yes, for sure. And that coffee will definitely reach its destination, <laughs> whichever way we look at it. And it's, it's again, I say I wish we could have coaching, because it feels like there's, there's so many, we're, we're looking at this from the most important angles right now getting to know yourself, getting to understand your relationship with money. Um, and, and, and some of the questions that have come in, actually, one of the questions that came in then points towards money. So I'm going to f read another question before I come to uh, points towards family. I want to read another question before I come to that one. Now, this one is talking about um, insurance covers. Yes. Uh, Angela is asking, what advice would you give about investing under insurance covers. You want to go first, David, or? Well, a bit of it is connected to the answer I gave earlier. Um, everything depends, even as Francis also emphasized it. What's your investment philosophy? How much money do you want to make out of it? What is your risk appetite? Are you safe? Are you whatever? All those sorts of things come in. Have I ever used those investment um, insurance things? Yes, I have. You know, life assurance products, all right? I use one for school. Then um, now we're doing another one with my wife. You know, so she 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 can do something like that, and we get we're almost like creating quote unquote a retirement fund. So it goes back to to risk appetite, all right? It also goes back since you like talking a lot about family. Is it hers? Is it joint? Is it theirs? You know, those sorts of things come in. You know, sometimes uh, men, some men, st stereotypically speaking, stereotypically speaking, can be more risk averse, and they just go hit and they think I'll get up and walk again. But how many people? Are going to be affected by that by that hit so explore earlier on francis mentioned this term return on investment that is very critical people need to know if i put this money aside how much do i want out of it don't just put aside me many years ago as one of those first people put bought some shares in stanbic yes i bought 300 and as corporate and i thought i had done something great why did I buy the things? Well, because they're talking, whatever. Those who knew, day one, they had sold their shares. I know a guy who borrowed three million. Day one, the things had, had, had tripled. He got his money out. Day two, the cap price had fallen down to about double. You know, me, I came two and a half years later. <laughs> From 70, it was not six, you know, 265 shillings. 
two and a half years later. So a lot of these things goes back to your social intelligence. Where somebody hit on day two because they knew the field, I was arriving. And many times, too many corporates, with all due respect, have higher financial illiteracy than the ones we look down upon. I've done work in the markets. I've done what? Those guys understand money. We waste money. We smell good. Look good. And that's almost as much as you, as much as you get. So those insurance habits goes back to personality, what you want to get, because there could be other places that could give you more money. Thank you. You want to add on? Yes, yeah, smell good, look good. Right, there are some really, really good uh, products uh, on the market in terms of uh, money markets. I've, 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 I've benefited from quite a number myself, uh, so much so that even at some point I went into what I call forced saving, where I went and actually borrowed and, and released a bit of equity in one of my properties and then put money into an endowment fund. So, so I was borrowing from a bank at 16%. And I put money into a fund which was paying me uh, 13%. But then it had also other benefits, um, and one of which was, you know, God forbid, if I dropped dead, you know, it would pay out a huge lump sum to my family and take care of the education of the children. Now, the good news is I didn't die. <laughs> I survived 10 years. That fund was for 10 years. And in 2021, when we're in lockdown and everyone is at home sniffing and sneezing and whatever, I get a letter from uh, uh, from insurance company, and that was one of the best uh, you know moments in my life. So so you look at your income and expenditure, and David has said you know financial literacy. You don't need to go back to school. You all know these things. Anyone who tells me that you are not financially literate, let your pay slip come when it's missing a zero. Yeah, you know. You know, there are some lawyer friends of mine who are telling me, ah, oh, for us, you know, those things of numbers, you know, for us, we're not numbers. I said, you, you are the one who tells me that when you're billing, the advocate's rules say that 2% of the subject matter and blah, blah, blah. So stop, stop giving excuses. And you can give excuses if you want them. So, so take control of your life by taking control of your finances. And retirement is all about you know, planning for your life. Money is just, as I said, it's just an enabler. It's such a small thing, you know. It's a big thing in the big scheme of things. And I say if money can't buy you happiness, mm. it can buy you the things that make you happy, yeah? But it's, it's an enabler and, and involve your family. And I think that's where we're going now. That's yes. sure. That's exactly where we're going to. An enabler, an enabler. I like the way you have put it. People get so engrossed in money, in money, and they forget to look at the bigger picture. And I, it's a question that I always ask. Um, first of all, there's something that you said earlier. Uh, I think it's you, Francis, that said it. You're finding your why. When you find your why, uh, I remember they told us about this long ago. Finding your why then helps you, then it drives you, it kind of then energizes you, it kind of points you in the direction, or it just kind of gives you a formula on what you need to do. It kind of sheds light on, on things when you know, you, you kind of find a focus, or is it bearing, when you know your why. But when we speak of why, um, you make the money and all that, the bigger picture, there's always a family member somewhere. You may not have children, you may not be married, but there is somehow a relation that you, you, at the end of the day, if you were to drop dead, God forbid, then who then takes on all the wealth you've worked for? So there's family involved. So, and it's a very sensitive place to go to. So I'm going to ask a couple of questions, and I think I'm going to ask them at once because of time. Um, first of all, couples. Uh, b being able to work with your partner. I've had you, Francis, talk about it, David, as well, mentioning your wives involved in what you're doing. It almost feels like your wives know you want money. It is not that thing of your money is my money, my money. It's even confusing how it all sounds. But yes, it almost feels like there's transparency and it's something that I have noticed in relationships. In relationships, because um, I work with my partner and it just the transparency in finances is is such a huge thing and it's a, it's almost the beginning of most of the issues when we don't know what the other is making. I don't know if it's that important. But for you to be able to succeed, I believe, your family should be involved. We're talking about wife. We're talking about, let's first talk about the wife being involved because she's meant to be your support. You're meant to be working together. I feel she's supposed to be at least involved. That first question I'm going to ask there is, how do you do it and make it work? Because many people have said, how do you work with your partner? How? Do, how do you manage to 
keep sane <laughs> amidst those conversations. Then the next question I'm going to ask is the one question, it's a conversation we've been having about generational wealth, how the Asians are able to do it and pass it down and make sure that, okay, my son will do it and he does it, not by force. I don't know how they make them see, understand that, you know, what I'm doing is for us. So it feels like it's that important for you to get involved in, into it for us to achieve the bigger goal. So the first question is about the, 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 the partners, the couples, how you could handle the financial beat, how to uh, work together, operate together as a unit. Um, then also our family. How can we get our children involved? You spoke about your daughter not being interested in your pines. Daddy, you and your pines. Yes, we've seen. I've had my kid wants to be a YouTuber. Okay, it kind of falls in my space. So I've got to kind of do it. The other one is a musician playing the guitar, football. So the things that I feel I want to do to bring them in to understand the type of work I'm doing so that they take it on even when... Um, retire, uh, uh, what did you call it again? Redeployed, yes. I would want them also to be a part of it. How can we see this through? How can we manage to get our children involved so that it becomes generational, even if it's not forcing them to take or to love the pines, but they can also see it and understand the business aspect. But the first one, about our partners. How can we live together harmoniously in <laughs> in that space as couples. I think I'll start with you, David. Let me go first because uh, Francis's examples are right from the textbook. So <laughs> if he speaks first, then I'll say mine and then they say, you mean this guy is in a syndicanja case, syndicanja case. So uh, I'll do that. Um, that's, uh, we, we, we handle that topic a lot yeah. in very many environments. And um, I, I a bit of me thinks that part of the problem with that question or that situation is what we've gleaned in society. We think that the, the, the guy is the hunter, the person brings in the money, and then uh, the, either the people spend or he gets a bit of it. You know, there's also this discussion of uh, is a meza. And that discussion has become so rampant, people crack jokes on it, they sing about it, but what they don't realize, it is enforce, reinforcing a negative issue that the, the money belongs to somebody and he marries you and just gives you a bit. You know, there's many years ago, I think a CEO magazine came out where it brought, put out people's salaries. And then people, wives are saying, you mean the man gets? Where is it all going? All right? But one of the things I also learned a little bit of uh, psychology is this. Men are individualistic. All right? Stereotypically speaking, women are partnership. So even sometimes they can think, if, without telling you, that they have your, your money is their money, you know? And men, you know, it's almost like they need to invite you in their space. So that's where some of those battles uh, basically come from. But also sometimes I found that interests differ. There are some people, like he also talked earlier, people say we don't understand money things. And sometimes you can also get those in couples. When one person thinks, I don't understand, and when the figures come, and the figures come, then they get, you know. So some, I've, me I've seen men who wanted to work with their spouses, and they can't because the woman is not interested. I've read a book, Rich Woman, if some of you are interested in it, Rich Woman by Kim Kiyosaki, the wife of the person who wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And she, 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 she wrote a book and she said about 70% of the poor in the U.S. are women. And then when they go to corporates, they found that a lot of the, the were wives of rich people, but they never understood the business. They always assumed he would be there. And then when the person went on. So money is, uh, there are two subjects they don't talk about really, the whole money and sex all right <laughs> you know they don't talk about that so you don't get training me the training i received in my home when i was growing up was your first salary zabazadi yeah so i said when i got my first pay i gave they didn't say chapter two chapter three chapter four so i you know but where did that rule come from does my auntie told me your first salary you know basically that one my father was very strict with money giving you rules i remember he used to give up money and sometimes he put it up against the, the light Another time he asked me, do you know how I do this? I said, no. I have to make sure one note is one note. <laughs> so the amount of light coming through the note is, we'll tell him because I mistake how I, 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 I said, uh, he was an accountant, not to say anything about my neighbor, but um, he was an accountant. But, but those are things that got about money. Now, I also realized that also money management in couples depends on their backgrounds. Those ones who grew up, uh, a lot of them in the civil service environment and safe money, tebainaka hasu. They think money will always kind of sort itself out. Now, if you get a spouse who grew up in a slum, like a friend of mine said, 
in Islam, nothing. You know, money doesn't come. You go get, and even his face contortions changed, and I realized into a subject. Yes. So you've got to also understand all those sorts of things. Where did the people come from? What was their relationship with money, uh, and things like that? Transparency is key. Talk about money. Talk about money. Uh, we've also uh, do some marriage counseling couples and stuff like that. We've 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 reached stages where women have said, okay, they tell their husband, in that actually built a house, you know. There's some high mistrust that people actually think, will this unit last? This marriage last? What's my backup plan? But also, the, we need to face it. That many times, marriages also don't work. And the women are at risk. So until we sort out also some of those things, or people talk about them, we'll have issues. But if you can get talking about money, talk. One of the things that I would suggest are just games. There are some games. I, there's a game called Cash Flow Quadrant. Cash Flow Game. Cash Flow 101. That one I'd recommend. I personally do not recommend Monopoly. Uh, I think Monopoly is more of emotional management than teaching about money management. A couple of things. When you play Monopoly, everybody gets 200 as they pass go. Life is not like that. All right? In the other game of cash flow quadrant, they, they give you an occupation. They give you its living expenses. They give you its debt. They give you... So, so you need to make choices as you play the game. Cash flow. Cash flow 101. And there's also cash flow 202. That was by the Rich Dad Poor Dad company. Monopoly, they'll throw up the board and then their parents are there sorting it out. That one there, just play for fun. I don't recommend it to teach you finances. But uh, you can you can have a, you can play. Yeah. But now, I'm also getting my notebook here. I need to listen to <laughs> Mr. Kamlegia's textbook example. Thank you. David. <laughs> so, so I think for me, I'm, I'm, at times I, I'm a bit of a bad example because uh, number one, my example is a bit unconventional. Two, I've also don't uh, don't subscribe to the stereotype. Mm -hmm. So, so my personal experience has been informed by by upbringing, as well as uh, relationship I've had with my wife. So, been together for nearly thirty years. But we were together in the UK as young people, students, and, and, and renting a musical. So there had to be transparency. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Who pays the bills, who pays the electricity, who pays the council tax. And, 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 and also back there, you know where somebody's working. Mm -hmm. And you know how much they're earning. And also you are, all, you are aspirational in terms of you know, two years, three years, this is where I want to be. So I think that has laid the foundation. And, and there's total transparency. Secondly, I also want, I value my time a lot, and, and I want to do other things. So the one thing that I don't want to constrain me is finance, money, and other related obligations. So right now, I'm the unemployed one at home. She's the one who is employed, and, and she does lots of things. We, we, we you know, run a few schools, those properties I was talking about, she runs them. But most importantly, she, she I don't ask for allowance, I don't need a kameza, but, but <laughs> the very fact that, that she's the one in charge with all the finances, it, it then means that I can now do Other things. things and, 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 and um, I'm doing some really crazy things in my hometown of Masaka and that I don't want to start that conversation here. But that required empowering her and also putting her in charge of the finances and also being very clear in terms of you know what what it is that we need to put aside for children's edu education you know uh, endowment funds you know uh, medical insurance because when you think about it at, 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 and i use myself as an example you know if you not if you don't have a mortgage and i don't have a mortgage and and at 55 really colleagues who are watching this surely should pay off the debt to um you don't need 30 land titles because you know you can sit on it and say i bought it at 100,000 but now it's now Hundred million, but now it's five hundred million. Said so that is capital growth, but that's not money, mm -hmm. because if you say it's five hundred million, go cash it in and put the money here in NSSF, power of compounding. You know, put it at the treasury bills. Mm -hmm. So I went through a phase which I call decluttering, and 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 I used to have uh, an acquisition syndrome. Hey, and I bought those things, and then I sold them, and then was asset poor, cash rich. And then I deployed my cash 
to be able to generate income, which then meant I can walk away from PwC and then I can go to Masaka and do some really interesting things that are very fulfilling to me as a person, but also transformational to the community. And, and I can now be called a, a mutaka because son of the soil, because those are the things that matter to me. So, so my advice is be transparent with your partner. Uh, because I said, why do you work? You know, you work so hard and you're hiding those things and you're hiding them and you're hiding them. I've been part of estates <laughs> eh? and resolving things. I said, why didn't this guy tell the wife that these things existed? Yeah. So, so it's, it's, not, it's not worth it. Yeah? And, and, and in conclusion, I, I had an experience when I was living in PwC. We had a big, big party and invited lots of people. You are not in town, you should have come. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So I then had my daughter, Grace. She's now doing her, she's 16, she's doing her exams. Actually, yeah, Sunday is her birthday. So Grace used to joke at home, and I think she wasn't joking. She said she would inherit PwC. Uh, so I told Grace, but actually this is not a family business. You cannot inherit PwC. Uh, Mr. Mayanja Othman here is the new boss, but guess what? Nothing stops you from a member a few years from now. The reason why I say that is our children, when they go to school there, they describe uh, their, their thing. Yeah, You know, uh, Apollo's daughter might say, hey, well, my dad is in NSSF, NSSF, yeah. Eh? And, 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 and I've, got a, I've got another friend of mine who works for IFC. And I say, yeah, the daughter is a good friend of my daughter. You know, yeah, for them, IFC are away. Another daughter, they had handy. Uh, you can come to Sachi's restaurant. You know, it's theirs. So, so the children become identified with your place of work. And when you leave, not only are you going to struggle in terms of not having an address and also not having a title, which uh, they were trying to give me here, which I declined re uh, respectfully, they are also going down. Now that you're no longer in PW, so how do we explain to our friends at school where, where you work? You know, now that you are yes, now that you are deployed, what do we say? Eh? I say, eh, so that also is an aspect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, your just job just is one comment job. on that. Yes. Uh, that also kills esteem. You know, even sometimes when you're going to Kwanjula and then everybody says, uh, finance director, MTN, what, 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 uh, Airtel. Then somebody says, Nekolita uh, Janki. <laughs> then people kind of stoop over. And they kind of even wonder, how did that guy get into this entourage? <laughs> now, believe you me, those thoughts are going to run through many of the people who are going to return the next 12 months. In fact, for some of them, we just recommend read some personal development books on transitioning and also self-awareness and management. It's real. And now they could laugh and be the other end and say, not me, until you get there and you have no title. I told you my story, but yeah. Please, <laughs> let's know. take that seriously. <laughs> I told you, two hours are going to be not enough. They're just so short. Time has flown by. Uh, before we forget, uh, happy birthday in advance to Grace. Temutu is kupate, na it's okay. Happy birthday in advance. Um, I, and I feel like this conversation needs to continue. I feel like there's so much we have not yet covered. Many of your questions that are not answered, but uh, Headmaster is going to tell us how we can follow up on that conversation. I know you still have many questions. Uh, but for me, it has been a total, total pleasure to have the two gentlemen here. It's been laughter. It's been lessons. And I'm sitting with, you see, but I'm learning notebooks. They are writing. They were writing. Me, I thought they were doodling. Wapi, they are writing, taking notes. So I hope you've also taken some notes. But if you do have questions, make sure you keep them in coming on uh, the NSSF platforms across. But I thank you so much, gentlemen. I have increased on my social capital. I'm doing good. I've got people to talk to. And uh, before I hand over to Mr. Edmaster, if, if anyone wanted to talk to either of you gentlemen or reach out to you uh, on our social media, to truly digital, even if you are silver surfers, I'm assuming you are silver surfers. <laughs> so um, uh, where can they reach you? How can they reach you? How They want to know more because this lesson is not enough. Learning it never gets finished really never ends. So where can they reach you? Are you on social media? Uh, David as well, if you can tell our viewers. Um, yes, I'm on social media. Uh, but looking at my age as well, I prefer to give an email. Um, and the reason for that is that, uh, you know, sometimes when people get you now, they want an answer now. And if you're busy, uh, they could get discouraged. So maybe I can leave an email. Uh, do I give it to the headmaster? Do I say it out here? I can say it out here. It is K-A-B-I, the first four letters of Kaviswa, K-A-B-I, David at hotmail.com. 
So it's kabidavid at hotmail.com. <laughs> and then for the sake of people like Headmaster who are laughing, I, I, I upgraded it. So there's an equivalent of KB, kabidavid at gmail.com. Yeah, people kept saying, you know, I said, when all you guys left, the email became faster. But uh, they still kind of think, what? We, we, you know? Yeah, so, so I have both. So get me there. Because then we can explain and talk, and then after, if it's something that needs conversation, I can call you back and things like that. Thank, thank you, you very yeah. much. Thank you so much. You guys, thank you for cracking us up this morning. And to you, Francis, where can they reach you? Also, Hotmail or? Uh, yes, I'm actually on iCloud, if that, uh, if that helps. Of course, why aren't I surprised? <laughs> of course. So, uh, F for Francis, X for Xavier, FX, Calm, K A M at icloud.com Thank you very, very much, gentlemen, and all of you for following us uh, through this webinar, and I hope you've learned a thing or two. I will hand it back right to our headmaster, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, I also don't, I don't have an email, by the way, apart from the work email, but thank you so much, uh, Caritas. Thank you so much, Francis. Thank you so much, David. We are going to do something we have not done before, and uh, this is the beauty about me doing this, being the headmaster of this class, is I make the rules. So you are the, just, just receive the rules. So I'm going to do an extra 15 minutes. It's going to be called extra time. It's going to focus on one and only one thing, and it has come in over and over again. I hope we can wrap it up before the 15 minutes elapse, but we want to just touch a little bit on two things. One, and uh, uh, characters now you're becoming a panelist. You also have a question here. Uh, Francis, there is a, everyone has been asking us, and one of the things when we are writing to you, we, we, we use a lot of, of letters. So we, are, we, we scampered down and went, let's get uh, no, CEO, he, he must be a CEO. So we labeled him, we baptized him, uh, Anna Maria there and Jackie baptized him, he must be CEO. So we did CEO, Masaka Vocational School, something like that. Uh, so one of the things we want, I, I would want to wrap my, hand ar my head around is Francis Kamlegea, PWC, uh, prestigious partner, now in Masaka, Masaka School of that Death, Death. Yes, I was struggling with that word. I was calling it a different word. School of the School of the Blind. Uh, he's Deaf. Deaf. Yes. My apologies if I did if, if offends. He's he's come from communications house to Masaka. That disturbed. Or that did, but we we are just wondering. How did you get to that bit? Of course, you've hinted on it about the passion, but how did you get to that point? But also one fact, I, my, my team calls it fun fact about Francis Kamlege. They tell me he's a mascot on weekends. <laughs> on weekends, he's a mascot. When you go to time to play, you will find he's the one doing the mascot. He's the father Christmas. He's the fa so he's the Mickey Mouse. We need to understand and we need to, this is one of the things that, that's what we call living in retirement. And, and, and we wanted to get a little bit, your redeployment, we want to get a little bit of that insight story, your past, that journey. If you can just wrap around some things there, that personal journey about how that time is happening for you. Francis. <laughs> My apologies that now the world knows you a mascot. <laughs> so when you see some, when you see Mickey Mouse moving around, stop and ask it. Maybe be Francis. <laughs> okay, let's let's start with the school for the deaf. So so that's that's a school we set up in two thousand and five. So it's been going for the last eighteen years. And I, I did hint a bit about my background and training, but I left Mackay University in nineteen ninety and went to the UK. My, and, and, and since now this is uh, like coming out, you know, let me come out even a bit more. So, so my, my, at the university I studied agriculture, so I've got a degree, Bachelor of Science in Agriculture. I always get asked then how did you end up in finance and said, you know, what do you mean that? But that's a story for another day. So, so after graduating and, and, and I grew up in Masaka in a rural village and agriculture, we are 
we are just farmers and even I'm now a farmer right now. But I, I wanted something more than that. And people of my generation, uh, they, whatever they did at university is as a result of the grades they got as opposed to wanting to be a YouTuber. By the way, even I've got another uh, 11, 12 year old Gabi, she wants to be a YouTuber as well. So me and you, at least, you know, we, we can compare notes <laughs> when they are all up and running and on social media. So I, I, I spent 10 years in the UK and, and then when I came back, a lot of my friends who I was working with um, in, in, in the city of London were quite keen to find out how I'm adjusting. And that's when people say, oh, you've gone back to Africa. I say, no, no, actually, I've gone to Uganda. It's my home country. I'm not in Africa. It's Uganda. <laughs> and I insisted and insisted, just like I insisted with that CEO title. And then eventually they got to know that actually Uganda is Uganda. It's not, I'm not in Africa. And then later on, they then they were quite keen to see how I was, get, how I was going on. But I was in PwC because I was with, working with PwC UK. So I went to Masaka, which is my hometown, is the city now. And, and I really wanted to give back and do something impactful and, and, and transformational. And having got the experience of living outside my home country and also having come back into PwC, having been out of, 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 of Uganda for 10 years, uh, I tried to look for the people that I studied with, the agriculture. And now I was a, a manager, a tax manager in PwC. And my colleagues were, were doctors of entomology and, uh, you know, maize, they were attending maize symposium about the latest uh, aphids and all sorts of other pests and, uh, you know, uh, interesting uh, botanical things. And, 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 and I realized I have nothing in common anymore. But actually, having said that, we have now reconnected thanks to the power of social media and we're all adult and we have a lot more in common. But that time, there wasn't. So the friends of mine said, you know, we need to do something that we can support you and help you. What do you want? And I told them that uh, I, I would like to uh, start a school for disadvantaged children and in particular um, deaf children. Why deaf? I actually have somebody that I grew up with in the village. Uh, it's called Moses uh, Kilangwa. Uh, we grew up in a village in Kimanya, those who know Masaka, and, and, and were naughty boys just like any other naughty boys of that age. But he never went to school, so would come back having, you know, done all sorts of mischief, you know, sugar canes by the roadside, and fene, and, uh, you know, I don't want to disclose so much, you know, was was this, this guy is disclosing way too much, but anyway, uh, that was in 1979 during the Saba Saba War. So then I left Masaka. Then I met him in 2003. And that guy remembered me. I didn't remember him. We're now grown up. And the guy told me, after having so many conversations through a, a, an interpreter, he said he wished he had gone to school. And for me, that floored me. Because, you know, you are there. You know, you have your suits and you have your titles. I used to be on TV every day. Every other day after the budget, people in Masaka thought I was the one who read the budget. And, you know, they, they, they were calling me all sorts of things. But this one guy said he wished he went to school. So then I said, how many other disadvantaged people have not gone to school? And then, and then I looked into myself. You forget this corporate world and all the titles and all the fancy cars and the address and things. I said, actually, the difference between me and this guy is education. It's not my tribe. It's not my religion. It's not my parents. It's, it's, it's just education. And it's amazing um, when you, you, you strip yourself to the bear yeah? and, 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 bear and take away all these titles, you realize that actually it is the education, it is the opportunity and the exposure. So I said, um, I'm, I'm not average, you know, I, I think I earn a bit more than lots of other people. And for that matter, I'm going to do something that is going to be, um, impactful mm -hmm. and most importantly, we will stay even after um, I'm gone. Mm -hmm. Hence, in 2003, we set up a school. In 2005, um, we got funding from those friends of mine in the UK. 2008, they stopped funding the school. By that time, I was in Kenya, I think. And we had uh, 20, we had 58 children. The financial crisis uh, that you'd be familiar with um, resulted in lots of those guys losing their jobs. So they used to give us, I think, 25,000 dollars a year to, to look after all the children, you know, education, pay the, feed them, and also uh, pay salaries. And they stopped, just like that, 
because they had even lost their jobs. Some of them even committed suicide. It was really, really sad. You know, there are some really good friends of mine in the city of London. So I then tell the teachers, we call a parents meeting and tell the parents, you have to start paying school fees. And in 2009, the school which closed with 78 children, we opened with 22. And then I tell the teachers, please go and get those children back so that they can say that they cannot pay school fees. And our school fees is 260,000 shillings a term, 260,000 boarding school. So I was here, you know, looking at my children go to Rainbow International School. I look at that invoice, and then I look at 58 children who have not come to school, who, were, who would have been okay if I never brought them into this environment. Because as far as they were concerned, mm -hmm. society had given that on them. Mm -hmm. Even their mothers and parents and guardians used to call them Kasiru. And, uh, and, and then I said, no, 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 that cannot be. Let's ensure that you get education. And I had to look into myself as a human being, as a Christian, as a parent, and, and also looked at how I was spending my money. And I say, I think the one thing that I know I can do and I should do is to um, carry this, you know, burden. Because how can somebody who's in the city of London giving me 2,000 pounds to educate a child from Chamaliwa, from Kali Sizofu, mm -hmm. suddenly stop and that child now is not going to have an education? So this dependency syndrome, you know, we think donors are white people from outside countries. So I said, no, that is not going to happen. And I talked about, um, you know, speaking to the family. I spoke to my wife. Uh, she was, I think she was still in the UK by then. And, and, and I said, I'm going to do this, and we're going to do it. Then I trained and, and even got a bit more money. Then we got the teachers, went to Chambo, got sign language interpreters. To cut the long story short, we have educated over uh, 1,262 children, providing them education at our massacre school for the deaf. Mm. Um, and that school, running that school, cost about 10, about 7 million shillings a month. The government pays uh, school fees for teachers, which is uh, the equivalent of about, um, I think, 2.8. Um, I have a farm. I grow coffee. Uh, all the money from the coffee goes to the school. I have fish ponds. Uh, somebody was saying, you know, they are retired. What keeps them busy? I've got eight fish ponds. There's over 40,000 tilapia and catfish in there, and all the money goes to the, to, the, to, the, to the school. But most importantly, this other endowment farm fund I talked about earlier on, once it matured, and I looked at the gap between uh, what happens to them when they finish primary school and also the small vocational training that we had given them and those who had got really good skills and now they earn a living independently, we decided to set up a vocational training institute. So, so we have what I would call a world-class uh, vocational training institute, is Masaka Vocational Training Institute. Masaka VTI is the website. And it gives priority to children with special needs, but also uh, to ensure that we generate income. Uh, we also admit all other children. So for me, the story is you really have to have something beyond just you and your immediate family. But most importantly, you must have also something that goes, goes beyond just the eight to five, because um, I think, you know, they call it purpose. You really need to have something that is deeper than just your, your, your job, than your vocation. And all said and done, how do you want to be remembered? Because at the end of the day, we're all <coughs> and, and we fear death, but actually what we fear most is being remembered. That's why you see people building buildings and putting names on their buildings to be remembered. That, that is not the way to do You do something that is impactful, that has meaning, that has significance, and that is going to last and, and when you're gone. And hopefully then you, whatever mistakes you've done here on earth, you hope that when St. Peter's will comes, he says, you know what? You're only human, but come in, sit here. Thank you. Thank you so much. I am still coming back to the mascot. <laughs> you have not dodged it yet. Thank you so much. I, I, I would have missed that. I would have missed that. It is worth my, my, my extra time. I want to go to David. And David, there is a, there is, there is a gap here. And I want, I want you two to fill it up. I, this is not mine. This is from uh, Jackie, and, Jackie and Anna there. They were whispering to me. The long cable. The electricity cable. 
when life got you to that point of the long electricity cable you know people can move moving around with suits and you think they have never really really gotten problems like you're seeing problems but the long cable the 3k lunch how did you get out of it and what's that you know that the my my one of my good friends tells me you need to grow through not go through problems but grow through problems so i would now say that you have grown through that problem uh, mind sharing how do you did you grow through that um yeah i can keep it brief um <clears throat> it was an eye opener of course as i shared um first of all i had a good workmate i mean the neighbors a former workmate and in my mind i also kept wondering what is he thinking is he thinking that i took a you know a bad decision to, to get out of work early so i i, I did that twice all right you know when 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 uh, you know the good thing water you know you, you can you know kulembe can and stuff like that how they get out it's interesting that uh you can call it faith you can call it belief um how i got out of that i think was a good thing when i remember talking to somebody and he said hey where have you been i've been looking for you all right let me first tell you some of the challenges in that period somebody met me and said hey man you have lost weight <laughs> all right so i felt the ordinary thing to do was to tell them what i was going through so i started then and then the guy interjected man that guy exercise regime is working very well so i said that's what he thinks i'll keep my story to myself i'll take that i'll keep my story you know to myself but how i got out of it from the financial perspective was the whole element of uh, somebody told me we've been looking for a consultant for six months and they have failed and my mind it clicked six months in kampala then I knew that while I was going through all this kind of thing, you know, there's this you know, God was watching over me and stuff like that. So I got out of, but there, uh, I, habits had changed. I didn't learn how to pray, you know, when you take a breakfast, uh, bread and, and, and a piece of bread, you say, may it last till 5 p.m. <laughs> you know, those things are lasting till 5 p.m. I need to do so, you know, so. And one time sharing with somebody and said, eh, these prayers of give me, give us this day, they bread for real. And the guy looks at me as though you mean you're just finding it out. And I realize wrong number yeah. that I can't understand is not here to zero. Okay. But it does that consulting thing. As in that thing for eight months. Eight months. Just, you know, moving around. And I knew in that period, you can't visit anybody who's working because they are busy. You can't go and hang out at a cafe because you have to pay. You can't. And you suddenly realize how much money you need to actually keep going things that you took you know for granted when you were uh in the workplace but it's consulting that took me out and um and that's when i also decided i would also become an sme they will know me for this particular thing i chose that thing mastered in that thing break it down to the points that people can understand so i do a lot of strategic planning let the cleaners be there however complicated i must break it down Move away from these strategic plans where everybody leaves feeling hey, man, <laughs> silly. Ah, man, well, you know, they didn't understand this. No. So, yeah, that's what uh, basically is, is keeping me out there. Another good thing, my wife, if she had done those sorts of things, maybe I would have collapsed. <laughs> you know, that's where you get this quiet support. So, was she quietly, was she quiet because she was in shock? <laughs> was she quiet because she was in support? But whatever happened, she, she hung in there. All right, but of course the children, as I told you earlier, they started asking those questions. So I knew you dress up smart. You go and sit. In, you know. So I remember one time my wife came back and said, "The son man said, ah, your husband reads a lot. We're in a meeting somewhere, so he, he must have read for three hours." She said, "He reads a lot." You know, basically at that stage, what could I do? Mm. You must read, and that's when I knew Oasis life starts at eleven. So go there seven thirty, you can read. Then kitchen, kitchen, eleven people start coming. Do you want a soda? Then I knew time to go. Go where? You know, so there's some of those hard, hard, you know, sorts of uh, situations. But for me, it was training ground. When I started doing consulting, some of the people in the market, I understand them. I understand them. I don't play around with things like money. You know, these things of being extravagant that I need to... No, no, no. Even when I started going into volunteering someplace, because I knew where I'd come from, you know. So I use those sorts of experiences to connect with people and help them move to where they're doing. But passion is key. He was a uh, school and stuff like that. Now my passion is social business. These NGOs which have this mentality that somebody needs to give you money. No, you do a social thing and let businesses support the social thing. That's the only way to be gone forever and ever and ever.
Thank you. Thank you, David. And Caritas, I have not saved you. <laughs> I, I know I, I could see you were wondering, you're saying this time should go, this time, this extra time. Yeah, there was this extra time on extra time. One of the things that has come out uh, boldly here is the social capital. And one of the things I keep telling people here is social, it can be social, but it may not also be capital. Because I have shared my story of when I was trying to raise capital and I looked around all my social circle and couldn't even raise a million out of them, but they were there. But it is key to define that social capital. And I would, and this morning, one of the things, and please, when you are writing your book, those, day, those times when you are the opera of Uganda, please put, remember to mark this. One of the things Headmaster Sir has exposed you to is this capital. Kindly, kindly, if you could share in a, in, in, in a, in a minute, how would someone pick and utilize capital that they get, the networks that they get exposed to on a daily for their retirement? Uh, um, I guess, first of all, uh, is understanding. We still have to go back to understanding your why, you know, what what is it that you want for your own life? Because if you don't understand what you want or where you want to head to, then you will not even notice that social network, you know, you'll not notice the social capital that surrounds you. So it is first of all understanding what you want to do, where you want to go, and then in that you will then figure out what kind of support do you want, what kind of people would you want to network with. But then also just um, being able to talk to, you know, people sometimes misunderstand the social capital, they literally interpret it to money. When they see social capital, they see money. They, meant they kind of interpret it that way directly. And yet sometimes that's not how it works. Sometimes, you know, it, it, one person could lead you to another or to a place that you probably need to be. Or um, even your social capital could uh, create an aha moment for you just from the conversations that you have. Like the gentlemen here today, I've been talking to them and I realized the journey that I've taken, which is also in... Uh, still in social work, other than creating content, there is also the so social area that I work in where it's, you know, trying to, I was talking to David and telling him what we're getting into, which is skilling uh, young children and, you know, farming as well. I was telling Kamlega here that I'm also going into farming. So yes, it is the conversations that I had with the gentleman this morning that with David, I got an aha moment and then with Kamlega, I'm like, oh good. So we we now know where to take our kids. We are going to go to his farm. Uh, I have David there. He's been in the NGO space, which is where I'm going to. He understands it. I'm also going to learn from him. That will translate eventually into the financial beat that people start with. It may not just necessarily start with that. Not always. It is just realizing what you want to do, where you want to go. And God always puts place people, places people in your path. You just have to be able to, that spirit of discernment to know who it is that you're going to be able uh, to work with or who will hold your hand uh, for the next steps that you have to take in your life. So I have I have the two gentlemen here. Mbesi Vieko, by the way. Yeah. They were irregular. At all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Caritas. Thank you so much, Francis. Thank you so much, David. One of the things, and uh, next time, please do not feel shy because there's going to be a next time. Car kindly carry the coffee. One of the things we do here is as NSSF, you are our members and we would want to expose you to other members. Whatever you have, and one of the things we let go happen in the chat box is we let people advertise whatever they have because it's about the networks. NSSF will be of purpose to you if it can expose your product to other members. Then you grow and then you pay more NSSF for more employees. So it's a win-win for all of us. We, we appear like we are doing it for, but we know what we are also after. But when you think about coffee, I have, I have a second name that I've added to my list on top of, uh, after Kabushenga's name, and I've added Kamlegea. Please, coffee, reach to him. Time to play if you are in search of a mascot, you are in search of Mickey Mouse, you are in search of a place where you can take your children over the weekend. Time to play. And when you are there, just know that you know the big people. Uh, David here. David, there is a conference coming up. I have seen you feature on that conference. Yes, I, d I think. Please yeah, yeah, talk yeah. about it. Yeah, um, there's a there's a conference for ladies tomorrow, Saturday, uh, and then it will be it should be crowned with a dinner at night. Uh, I will be there. 
as a, as a facilitator of some of the questions, do, kind of doing what you're doing. Yeah, so it will be at Africana, and then the dinner will be at uh, Serena. Virtuous Woman, it's something that happens every, every, every year. And uh, basically, it's also helping, you know, network, creating networks, and also putting money together to do some good. So if you come tomorrow, that's some of the things that you'll be able to uh, to find out. So thanks for, for giving that opportunity. I, yeah. Yeah. I don't know how you got to know, but thank you. No, no, no. And, and when, when uh, please, when you go for the virtuous woman, make sure you tell the person when you are paying, headmaster sent me. So that I, I am going to be there just collecting the commission. And Francis, yes, kindly, somewhat. Yes, I realize this is the opportunity now also to, to everybody to say what they are doing. So I did mention that we have set up a vocational training institute. Actually, I can say here uh, unashamedly and unapologetically that I think right now Masaka Vocational Training Institute which is a very brand new purpose-built uh, facility, is the most modern, best, both in terms of looking, very, very bright and beautiful buildings, but most importantly, best equipped. And, they, and that's, that, that institute is in Saza, for those of you who know Masaka. Many of you ply the Masakambara Highway. You can't miss our signpost. It has capacity for 380 learners. So far we have 28. We opened in Feb. And I'm very, very serious about it. Okay. Now yes. you had it. Uh, yeah. For all of you also looking for where to get some kamane, uh, this brokerage is free. You can always tell someone to tell someone. And when they tell that someone, make sure they tell them that you told them. And you can always come to the office and uh, partake of that. But thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you so much, Caritas. Thank you so much, David. For once, we have broken our rules. We never go stretch beyond, but I, I thought it was important that we stretch beyond and take in, take in another 30 minutes of your time because we may not, getting you here was also a hassle. But thank you so much, Francis. Thank you so much, David. Thank you so much, Caritas. Always, always, always uh, helping our people, helping our members. Uh, understand where they need to be financially, where they need to be socially, where they need to be to be of purpose. Uh, from NSSF, all we are asking for is you need to make your benefits count. And we are counting on you. Count on us to pay those benefits, but we are counting on you to make them last. Outlive your benefits. Don't, make, don't, don't let them leave you out. Thank you so much and have a great day.